keeps dying too much. <laughs> That's the first like, thing the stream hears. That, that ass, buy a UAV. <laughs> Yo, that ass, dude, if they had a... Buy, just buy a UAV. Imagine buy, if buy Goku... Imagine if Goku had a UAV when he was on that, uh... What's that huge road called to go meet, um... The, oh, the huge snake. Uh, snake. Snake road or whatever. What was snake. the snake's name? Snake He's going to meet... He went on this the road Started with an S. King Kai, to be honest. Yo, King oh, Kai bro. was a boss, brother. <laughs> What was the snake's name? Um, Pierce, you remember the snake's name? Nah, I was... Sorry, what the, like, Oh, man. I said, yes, let me tweet out the stream. Going live. What number podcast is this? Uh, 33. Podcast number 33 with the GOAT. Done list. Always get gassed. Bro, Shenron! <laughs> yes, Shenron. Shen Shenron, bro. Wait, you guys are talking about this st That's not a snake, that's a fucking dragon. Yeah, a dragon. That's what I said. It's called well, Snake Way. In the shape of it's a snake. It's called Snake Way. They go to get King Kai. Not Wait, if you said a dragon, I would have said Shenron. Yo. But you said a snake, I was like, is there a snake in Dragon Ball? I was like, hey. Speaking of that, uh, there was a guy way back in the day that played COD 2 named Shenron. He was the leader of Type Z. Do you remember Pat? Type Z is a dope name. Yes, I do. Of course I remember. That and was Nitro the best Z, ever, bro. Aftermath actually joined that team and hard carried them. Mm -hmm. That name was dope. Type Z. That my name so bad. Type Z and 3G were like the best names. 3G was close for sure. And then in Gods. I love Gods. Yeah. I was on the second iteration of 3G when uh, Eulogy came back and Noobzilla. What's your favorite team name of all time, Pierce? Uh, uh, Final Boss was pretty cool. Um, Instinct. Halo what a what a Halo names, but <laughs> Nine was cool. It is cool. I uh, honestly, to be honest with you, Quad Nine has got to be like my favorite organization. The colors, yeah. the like logo, like everything about like about them is just like it's such a cool concept, you know. I like it too. I think that's how I feel about Liquid. Whenever Liquid comes out with stuff, I'm always like, dude. I'm not even a huge Marvel fan or anything, but when they came out with the Mar the Marvel crossover jerseys, I'm like, bro, this. Oh yeah, I was like. Phew. Yeah, their stuff's always dope, man. Some like of what names are legendary? Like when Cloud9 came out with like their, I think it was like their worlds, um, worlds like shirts and everything like that. Usually they come out with it like every year. And like it was literally just flags all over there, uh, like all over the jersey for every place they've been to for worlds. And I was like, oh, that's elite. Do you guys remember those hideous jerseys Faze used to wear? Oh, oh man, yeah, I know. Like first color ones? Yeah, dude, oh, those are hideous. Yeah, those are horrible. Same with the old optic jerseys, bro. Maybe people were in paintball jerseys in gaming. <laughs> what the hell is going on? But all right, did you guys tweet out the stream? I uh, tweeted it out, letting people load in. Mm -hmm. Tweet it out right now. Straight ripping was kind of cool. A little corny, but cool for the time. It's just nameless, right? Yep. Yeah. We'll give people like must, another minute. Must, must be nice. How did you get your name, Pierce Gunless? Uh, one day, just... Ah, uh fan. fan. What? Oh. <laughs> we're, uh, we're educating the people. Uh, one day, um, my like my other name that I had, that will not be named because it was, it was super lame, but... Uh, nah, it you was... can't do that. You can't do that. Because I'll show you my other, my other super <laughs> lame name. I bet. Name has been nameless forever, though. That's unfair. No, uh, I was Bo Jangles, 707. Like, oh, there my... you go, Bo Jangles. <laughs> Bo Jangles, mother sucker. 707, you were killed by. And then I was uh... the snowman. <laughs> uh, but, I mean, the name that I had beforehand was, like, Overtime Clutch. Oh, that oh, is bad. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Wait, that's kind of, that's a, if I saw that name, I would think you're you sweaty, bro. Name, like no, overtime. no, it was just, it was literally pure just Overtime Clutch. That's like... a sweaty, bro. You're a sweaty. I would be like, this guy's trying one time, going 110. Oh. Oh yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. But um, one like you know, like back in the day when uh, Xbox 360 and all that, like you like people wanted to put like kind of like the organization in front of their name first, yeah. like you know, like uh, like Envy and stuff like that, Envy mm -hmm. Optic, all them. But you know, that name's kind of a little bit too long to uh, that's do you brother. know put it put a thing. So I didn't want to do Clutch because like that's a fucking lame ass name. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Overtime clutch is cool, but just clutch? Fuck out of here. Like, bro, everyone has that shit. Like, literally just every single person. So, me and my friend literally went on, like, Google one day and literally just started looking at uh, just cool, cool things. And then came across Gunless, and they're just like, yeah, I mean, you're really good at, like, hand knifing. Like, because that was, like, I guess the thing I was good at. I was like, all right, bet it sticks. There we go. Makes sense. It's a cool ass name to be honest. A lot of people don't have creativity nowadays. Nah, people like with their first names. Hey, I think <laughs> nah, we've I had that talk before about the crappy names and COD. There's a lot. Yeah, we have. Everyone always has the same ones. You can oh, bro, I'm so it's happy. Accuracy. I'm so happy Kenny went back to Kenny. Whew. Oh man, yeah. yeah. I, I didn't. I wasn't rocking with the Quavo. I wasn't rocking with that one bit. I was like, you know what? I was like, Kenny, like you're the one person that, like, you know, you can rock your own name and get away with it, like, yeah. perfectly fine. Like but, even if he did Quavo Ken, maybe, but he just wanted to be Quavo. Like he's tripping. Yeah, no, I did. I did not like that <laughs> Quavo, one. Quavo, <laughs> Quavo just sounds like an exotic fruit. Somebody says. <laughs> 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 well oh, guys bro. thank you guys for all tuning in i appreciate everybody loading up uh I'll do some quick plugs here uh big shout out to prediction thank you guys for supporting the podcast it goes a very long way make sure you guys check them out at prediction on twitter you can see it at the top next to the banner for the people who are watching or listening rather on spotify or itunes we appreciate you very much and hopefully you have a great day at work for people on the live show much love for you guys tuning in every single week at the same time to watch our show. And if you're on YouTube, make sure you leave a like. It goes a long way. Let's get into it, bro. How you doing, Pierce? Uh, pretty good over yourself. I'm doing fantastic. Can't, Can't complain. Uh, got back in the gym recently. Gym recently opened back up in my apartment. Been going for like almost two weeks straight now. Whoa, two wow. weeks has been opened up? That's crazy. Same. Mine, almost, almost mine almost still weeks. hasn't opened up. Dude, it's empty. Like a- Mine's mine's open. It's been empty, bro. I went today. There was like one person there. It's great. People are just scared to go. Yeah, that's what I was thinking as well. Cause like I'm going like late at night to like kind of try to avoid people. But like even when I'm like going during the day or like going out to like go for a run, like I look at the gym and literally nobody's in there. They just literally don't want to go in there. Yeah, I mean they have disinfectant everywhere. I'm sure your gym's the same way. Oh yeah, disinfectant no. napkins everywhere. Like bro, it's just it's great, dude. I'm loving it. I was losing and not being able to work out. And you lost a ton of weight, Pierce, right? Yeah, you did. You lost a lot. Oh, yeah. No, I lost. I think it was at, like, when I first moved to Dallas, it was at 230 pounds. I remember Ooh, when I measured. And then when I uh, when I measured myself, like, I uh, think, like, near the end of uh, Black Ops 4, I was at, like, 180 pounds. Damn, you lost 50 pounds, bro? Yeah, That's I was pretty... Cool. I was pretty impressed with myself right. with, like, a lot of muscle on me. I was like, whoa. I was like, Jesus Christ. Sheesh. What you lost, John just put on, dude. And his, what? Uh, when he got Don't fired. worry. I've been I've been putting it on as well ever since quarantining. Ah, like, this guy's always roasting. Is that why your head like, glitching the cam? So we can't yeah, see everyone, everyone wants to know why your head glitching. This guy's always gaming at his... <laughs> me? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, shh. <laughs> getting, I'm getting out of just like that, okay? No, I don't care if you head glitch. The chat just wanted to know. Um, yeah, no, I mean, I got to hide the stomach right now. It's getting a little bit out of control, <laughs> but, um, you know, I'll be, I'll be here soon, you know, just, yeah. But like, uh, just... like obviously since all the stuff went down, like I'm sure you're just like super eager to compete again. Like you've been, you know, let's talk about this first. Like you've been making a lot of content. You've been streaming, right? Like how, yeah. you got up there like 2000 subs or something. Uh, I actually hit 4k a couple of days ago. What the fuck? Yo. How long have you been streaming for Pierce? Uh, like two and a half months. Oh Shit. my God! Let's get it, Pierce. Jeez, big Yo, B. killing it. That's 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 good stuff, man. Congrats. How is it? Like having four thousand subs. That's like when that's you could focus on this full time right now, right? Like yeah, this like is life changing numbers. Yeah, this is life changing numbers, right? Like, do you feel almost like a like you want to just straight up ride this year out and just grind the stream? Like, I know you would love to come back, but. It might not be that bad to just continue to grind the stream and, and, and get ready for next year, right? I mean, yeah, that's kind of what I've been trying to do with all of this going on. I've been still trying to, or I've been still putting in like a lot of time in the game and everything like that, even yeah. when I'm not streaming, just to like make sure that like I'm still on and everything like that. But um, yeah, no, it's it's very very nice to be able to say that like you know a lot of my money or a lot of like support people are like sub- yeah supporting me and like 
helping me out with uh like you know getting me through this kind of like transition and everything like that and kind of like giving me kind of like i guess like a purpose i guess you could say yeah yeah uh and like allowing me to kind of like have a goal and like uh, kind of like pursue it because like for me it's always been like just competing right like i've only thought competing 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 nothing else and then like once all this stuff happened i started like streaming more and then like i met like a lot of cool people and you know that's what i first start, uh honestly started streaming for is like to meet like not like cool nice people and like kind of like be able to interact with them and like see like a lot of people that have like you know kind of same interests as me yeah what's it and... feel like to have oh go ahead oh no go ahead I was just going to say, to expand on that, like, what's it feel like to have a community? Because this is, you've yeah. streamed before where you've gotten to, like, a thousand subs and stuff. But, like, having a community like that is totally different. Like, you alive and there's people in there supporting you every day. Like, what does that feel like? Um, It's honestly the best feeling of the world uh, for me. Um, Like, you know, growing up, like, I didn't really have, like a, like, a lot of friends and everything like that. So, whenever I'm streaming and, like, throwing it up and everything like that, like... I consider a lot of the people in there, like, you know, even if they don't think it, like, kind of, like, friends to me. Because, mm -hmm. like, I'm, like, talking with them all the time and, like, getting to hang out with them. And kind of, like, asking what's going on in their day lives and everything like that. And that's, like, that's a dope. big thing for me when I started streaming that I wanted to do is to just kind of, like, one, practice on my, like, social skills because, like, I know they're really bad at everything like that. And two, just, like, kind of, like, build kind of, like, a fan base community with, like, you know, a bunch of people. How can you not like say, this? Is, this is This is fucking beautiful. Right. <laughs> That's some of those beautiful things that have ever been said on the podcast. Bro, Since Pierce. I've been around, bro. That was gorgeous. Every day or every time we go live, it's just like people chatting, asking questions, and stuff, trolling. It is all just heart emojis in the chat right now. Dude, is people, it? people love you, bro. Dude, people people love you, man. I think it's wonderful that that's where you're at. Like and uh like you said, you found more purpose right now being able to stream and stuff, and that's gotta be a great feeling. What do you just play like uh like do you play Warzone? Like what what are you primarily streaming right now? Um, I usually try to play like uh pubs, sometimes CDL, but I mean Warzone has been trying to get into it a lot more and even try to like compete in some of these like kind of like tournaments. Like I played in like the MFAM tournament that one time with like Symphony Doug and like Tia Ump. Yeah. And got like second, literally my first tournament. And like I feel like if I actually you know, try to take it as serious as much as possible, I actually could be up there with like a lot of those people. It's just like very weird to take uh warzone seriously when there's nothing really on the line you know yeah 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 but i'm kind of like one of those players where like if nothing's on the line i'm like full sending it like running into buildings like no like no Same. care in the world but are just trying to take kills Same. and who does that sound like <laughs> i do that every, every i try to squad wipe every time there's so many on the line so why not are you are you still doing uh like team pine scrims pierce or how uh, going? Or people just... I mean, well, the team pond scrims that we're trying to go on, I mean, one, when we're teaming up, what, Ian, Cap, um, Ian, Cap, who is, is wow, I'm actually getting, uh, Nato? Uh, Nato and, Zero um, oh, yeah, wow. a couple of them are starters now, right, Trey? Yeah, it's, Nato's a starter, Cap, uh, has just full sent it into kind of just being a content slash Warzone person Cap. right now. Barstool, Barstool cap, cap. Mm -hmm. and then Ian. Unfortunately for Ian, he's the same way because, like, you know, he got that notification from Seattle saying he's not going to come back this year. So it's like, you know, like there's no incentive for them to play, like, you know, right. team pond scrim. So it's kind of like I'm sitting there, like, kind of doing nothing and just, you know, trying to play because, like, I'm always down to like play scrims and everything like that. But like, even when we got like our next generation uh, pine team, uh, Proto went to Seattle be and started starting. Damn. Um, and then, oh yeah, Doug. Doug went on to an amateur team as well, and then it was like, okay, like we're back at the same position again, you know? Yeah. So being someone who's like such a true competitor, like you are, has, I guess, all have all these setbacks, uh, started to get to you yet? Where you just feel like, I don't even want to get on the game and look at it in a competitive way, and I'm just gonna start like go really full into this content creation and Warzone or whatever it is that you're gonna do. I don't know. Uh... Interesting question, because for me, it's very weird to just think about, like, content creation, like, uh, content creation, like, playing Warzone and stuff like that, because I've always been such a, like, a driven competitor my whole entire life, you know, competing and everything like that, just been my life. It's given me so much in my life that, like, I could just never be able to, act, like, ever, ah, be ever to, like, repay it. So, like, to just completely disregard that and try to go down a different path, it's very weird to me. 
and very kind of like unknown. So I'm not really 100 percent sure like Pierce. if that's something I can actually do. Yeah, that's how it feels, brother. That's how it feels. Something when yeah. a new opportunity comes. But uh, my that leads into my my next question. So thank you, John. Which was like, if when you eventually do get back on a team, which it will happen. Yeah. Like how big of a role will content creation play? Like you're going to continue to stream. Like, is that a non-negotiable? Like you got to stream scrims um, going forward, whenever team you get on, because like you said, you have a huge community in the making and as COD continues to grow, it's only going to get bigger. Right. So how do you feel about that? Like uh, when you do get um, back on a team, how would you balance it? I see. I mean, John, <laughs> John can agree with me on this one. I don't agree with a uh, screaming uh streaming team scrims i've it's never tough, agreed though. with it whatsoever yeah. i mean it's tough now as a you community, see. but i mean it's tough as a community since like i have like a huge community and obviously i want to give them content creation you know give them like ample enough time like with me on screen and everything like that but like when you look at all these other big esports and like all the like all the stuff that they do like league of legends doesn't scream scrims CSGO doesn't stream scrims, Overwatch doesn't stream scrims, like, you can, we can just keep riding them off over by one by one by one, and literally just look at them and be like, okay, like, you know, all of these, like, professional esports understand that streaming scrims is just, like, such, like, a pass, or, like, a burden on you, because you're just giving away, or teaching other people how to play the game, so it's like, why would you do that, you know? Yeah, do you yeah, think I was, go ahead, John. Go ahead. I always have to be, like, even, the, other than the teaching aspect, I always thought that even like the the discussions that you have with your teammates while you're on stream would be so much different than they would be off stream or people would say things that other that the fans blow out of proportion because they don't they've never actually been inside the scrim environment so you have to kind of deal with being called toxic or whatever the word may be even though really you're just trying to improve so win and i just think that if those things are happening off stream no one knows about that kind of stuff oh yeah no i think that's i think that's very funny as well cuz i mean john you were in you were in a lot of well, not a lot but like a quite a bit of our team scrims on rise mm -hmm. and like bro there's been so many times where like what me dan austin literally what going at each other's necks like bro i remember when me and dan were literally at the pro, or what at the pro league together and like we were screaming at each other literally telling <laughs> each other like what to do like what was correct and what was right we proceeded to literally go back and then start watching food wars together because we just like we don't take it personally it's not like I'm coming at you like as a person, you know, like we're, I'm trying to get better. You're trying to get better. Like we're taking that as like, you know, constructive criticism. Right. Yeah. And we're learning from it. The goal at the end yeah. is to win. It's kind of, I don't know like, if you watched the Jordan documentary, but it was kind of like that. All his teammates would say like, I guess the term would be kind of an asshole, but then at the end they respected and they understood why he's being like this just to prepare the team for when it came time. So they're ready to win. So and I think I'm, there's a few people like that in the community. Uh, yeah, I wish I wish people I mean the same people that call me toxic are the same people that praise Jordan and like I'm not comparing myself to Jordan whatsoever skill wise uh, But like the, the like kind of like the tactics and like, you know, the thought process and everything like I didn't even like know Jordan did any of that and I can, I literally did that myself just you know Because I just know it works Like it's to prepare for the tournament, you know, I don't go into a tournament super toxic and screaming at people I go into the tournament, like, vibes are high. I'm sitting there, like, I'm getting ready to play. Like, scrims are used to just constantly drill the importance uh, of, like, fundamentals and, like, the little important things to get ready for tournament time so that when you go into tournament time, that's the only things you're thinking about, you know? Yeah, no, I agree. Um, do you think that in scrims, uh, when you're on teams that stream scrims, because you have been on teams that stream scrims, um, when they people hear those arguments and stuff that haven't been on a pro level COD team and they think it's toxic and they, you know, obviously talk on Reddit and on Twitter and stuff and that affects like the other pro players view of you. Do you think that's affected your career? Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I believe so in a way, I feel like people just don't really get a chance to know me as a player. I feel like it's just like kind of like a hive mindset. You guys ever like see that clip of like Kevin Hart, uh, where like somebody was like, nah, the Titanic is trash. And then somebody jumped on and said, yeah, the Titanic is trash. It's like, okay, like, why? And they're like, oh, I thought we were just bad-mouthing something for no reason. And, like, you know, it's cool to hate on something without getting to know it whatsoever, you know? It's like one of those things where, like, I'm not even given a chance. Like, people aren't really giving me a chance whatsoever. It's like, I think of everything's just very logical 
uh, which is pr really stupid for the COD community, unfortunately. <laughs> um, when it comes to like logical things, it's like you go into a job, right? Like a normal job, you tell some uh, somebody tells you something, or your boss tells you that you're doing something wrong the first time, the second time, the third time, in a nice way. By the fourth time, I guarantee you, you're probably fired, and they're getting a new one. Absolutely. I guarantee you, by the third time, they probably get get somebody new. By the second time, they probably get someone new. You're probably lucky to even get one opportunity that the boss tells you that you're wrong, because there's so many people that could just come in and just replace you. No, absolutely. Like I mean. that's 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 how I feel. That's how I think of it as like, and that's just kind of like my thought process on all of it. I take this as serious as like a regular job. I mean, yeah, it should be. You guys, I think it should be taken even more serious with the way. Well, even yeah, like, even more seriously. Line. Yeah, and so when you say that, do you feel like you weren't given a fair chance uh, on the Huntsman roster? Like, people are going to want to know what led to you being replaced on the team because you guys were playing well, at least to, for the public eye. It looked like you guys were doing just fine. I and mean, then... like, given a fair chance, uh, I was given a fair chance. It was just like when you get on every single day and it was like the same thing over and over and over. And it was like... It got to the point where, like, it wasn't me saying any things anymore. It was, like, it was, like, me and Alec would just be sitting there and be, like, like, I wouldn't say anything. Alec would be, like, we're messing up the same things that we talked about over and over again. And I'm just, like, yup. Like, what? Like, there's nothing else that needs to be said. Like, we just kept, we, a mistake is something that only happens once. Once it's, like, once it happens multiple times, it's a choice. You're choosing to be ignorant. You're choosing not to fix it. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, go ahead, Ant. Um, yeah. So, like, I wanted to backtrack a little bit so we can, like, tell this full story about, like, this Huntsman team and everything. Because I want to get into, like, all the details of that and, like, know what happened, why it happened, and uh, sort of where your mind space was at during the whole process. So, like, w how did the team form in the beginning? We ask everybody this question, but I want to hear it from you. How did this team form in the beginning? Like, was this a team you wanted to be on from the start? Like, how, how did this all happen? I mean, yeah, from the very beginning, I've always wanted to team with Alec. I feel like, or, um, like when he was on United and everything like that. Alec is my favorite teammate that I've ever actually played with because, like, he's just uh, the most, uh, like, you know, thinks the most like me and, like, just understands how to play the game just as much as me and play, like, plays the game almost just as much as me. So it's, like, it's just a no-brainer. Like, when I team with him on United, I mean, same with Preston. Uh, like they just understand how to actually play the game really well and actually put in the time and effort to be good at it. But um, during like all the off season, everything that went down, uh, what Alec was getting offered by pretty much everyone, as one could you know obviously assume because yeah. he just won champs. Uh, I think uh he got he got offered on Seattle that everybody else knows, and. Um, I think like it was like almost like a last second thing where I don't know something happened where like I think people were like freaking out and Alec was like kind of losing composure because nothing else was kind of getting like finalized and then like Matt hit him up and basically just kind of all of this kind of just spiraled effect into just kind of everybody getting on board at the same time yeah so then like the team's form the year starts and immediately everybody's like that's a good ass team it's a solid roster yeah um and you guys were great like going into the season um you know with this team did you expect to be that good right off the bat and then um how were the vibes at that time i mean if we're being honest here any other game like we would have probably been the best team in the game like undoubtedly uh this game this game is what a subs paradise i guess you could say yeah. Uh, <laughs> I guess you could say. Yeah, uh, <laughs> but, like, I'm a natural flex. I need to, like, I use the subs on the subs maps and I use the ARs on the AR maps. This game, that's just not how this game works. You use this, I use the sub primarily, which is just weird to me. Alec is, I guess, considered hypothetical flex because only on one map, I guess you could say. Yeah. But, <laughs> is your cave. But, yeah. yeah. 
but if like the meta actually was good and like you know the way the game was like actually like kind of benefited like a flex or like you know ar kind of like mindset i feel like we'd have been the best in the game like undoubtedly like it wouldn't have been close yeah but because mm, what god what does it take for you guys to like want it to well for the team to want to stick it out because you guys were a top three team like did it you guys have to be undoubtedly the best team in the game to stay together? Uh, I don't think it was. I think it's just always a thing that, uh, you know, when you're a competitor, like when you're not winning like at all, like multiple times and constantly making the same mistakes over and over again, it gets to a certain point where I guess like change is needed, mm-hmm. where they felt like, you know, something like needed to change uh, for, you know, things to kind of, I guess develop and kind of improve uh i don't think it was uh you know i lost my train of thought to be honest did you you, go into the team did you go into the team knowing that if shit hit the fan you would be the one that got replaced because kind of looking at the roster and the history it's like well formal and scump are never getting dropped from that team right it's like you had to have had a little bit of apprehension going on to it, like knowing, like, if shit hits the fan, I'll probably be the one, right? Oh, no, I knew that from the very beginning. It didn't matter. Like, what people seem to, I feel like, don't understand is, is that it was, it, I could have been the best teammate. I could have been the worst teammate. It, it, it all came down to the fact that if we weren't winning, I was gone. Oh, I mean, it, I assume I, that, but I didn't know even if you were the best teammate. So- so, but what what led to it though? Like, what what led to the decision ultimately to replace you? I mean, I I I truly don't like. No, I guess it's just one of those things where, for you know, replacing somebody, it's they needed kind of like a breath of fresh air with somebody that was kind of like positive vibes, you know, sitting there kind of <laughs> not really <laughs> not really saying anything because. All it, like, when they dropped me, all it kind of did was, is, like, all right, they brought in Preston to kind of, like, bring up, like, the speed and pace, which Preston is known for, right? Mm -hmm. But Preston is not known as the person that sits there and tells you everything that we're, like, that's going wrong. And, like, you know, like, he'll give his ample input, right? Like, whenever it needs to be done. But he's not that person that will point at the mistakes and be, like, that bad guy, you know? So all it does, like, for me, it was, for me, nobody wants to be the bad guy. Why does, like, nobody wants to be that guy? So I'm just like, all right, I'll put my hands in the mud. And, like, I'll get, I'll get, like, you know, I'll get dirty and, like, literally say the stuff that needs to be said. Like, I don't care if you got, like, it doesn't matter to me. I don't (laughs) care if you got 30 championships. I don't don't care, like, at all. Like, we're equals. Like, if you tell me something I'm doing wrong, I'm going to listen to you. I'm going to be like, you know what, you're right. But... Like, regardless of how you want to say it, I've literally told them that multiple times to the point where you can scream it at me, you can yell it at me, I don't care. You're taking the time and energy to kind of teach me and, you know, help me get better, and I appreciate that. It's so easy to literally not say anything. I could say, I could have said nothing that whole time, and then what would have happened is someone else would have been the bad guy. Yeah. And then I still would have been gone by that chance. Like, I probably still would have been gone somehow. That's wild. It's just wild I mean, to think about. I mean, I, I can understand it because of the players that are on that team, why they made that decision. Um, it just seems like you guys could have definitely stuck together. Um, but I guess when you really think about the meta, they would have had it. They would have had it. They would have had to decide between you, Formal, and Arcities, realistically, if they wanted to get another straight up sub. And, and I oh, guess no. The decision, the decision, obviously, like it was. It was logical. That's why, like, I didn't, like, I didn't... The only thing I actually got mad about was the way they handled it completely. Um, like, what? It was it was a decision between, what, me and Alec, literally, pretty much. Like, that's it. Like, me and Alec both knew that, too. And the decision between me and Alec, it was... No, it was just Alec. Like, Alec was guaranteed, like, regardless of anything that happened, like, Alec was going to be, like, still on the team. And, like, Dylan Dylan was pretty much safe, like, completely. And, like, obviously, Matt like Matt and Seth could have gotten, like, I'm not even saying that they did, but Matt and Seth could have got 360 turned on literally three <laughs> events in a row, and they wouldn't have gotten dropped. Do you think that that creates, like, a... I mean, you know, it's, like, something that people are kind of scared to talk about, but, you know, I don't really care, so I'm going to bring it up. Do you think that that creates, like, a toxic environment, having, like, undroppable people? Like, how is it... I mean, there's... Like what. Well, there's what six players that are undroppable right now that you could say. Let's name uh, them. Wait, who, who are they? 
no matter uh, how they one, perform. The no matter way. how they perform, Krim, Clay, yeah. um, Gump, Formal. Swear. Who's who's the what? Well, who's the Octane? Octane, yeah, Octane's uh, one of them that you could say probably just not going anywhere. Slasher. Um, I mean, I guess you could, yeah, I guess you consider Slasher. I was trying to think of like, more, like, cause followers, followers just means everything to organizations and like, you know, the ability to pump out content. Oh, dash. Yeah, yeah, dash. Oh, yeah, that's true. Huh? <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> you laughed. Saying. You said, <laughs> no, no, "Dash, you would be." No, on that's that. not what I was saying at all. No, that's not what I was saying at all. It's just that whole team is just like full of people. Like, I'm not even sure that Dashy puts out much content anymore. He could. He has the uh, ability to. Well, you see I it. Mean, in, yeah, he is. You're seeing but, it more and more in like COD League. Like some players won't be benched, and some will. Like some people are more expendable than others. And you know, yeah, you're following and your willingness to do content and be good in said content that has a big influence on your position on teams. I mean, I think about like ultra, some of those two players and think about some of these other teams and it's, yeah, I mean, that's how it is. I do, but to answer the question, like, do you think that creates a toxic environment? Uh, I think it just creates laziness. Okay. Uh, I think it's one of those things where, um, like, you know, pressure makes diamonds. I've always believed that. Uh, you know, when I was on my rise team, I believed even when we were winning at any sort of like time I could get dropped. No thought in my mind. Did I think, oh crap, I'm a two time MVP. I'm good. You know, like I'm good. Like I'm not going to get dropped. I thought, no, there's, there's still a chance I could get dropped. Ex especially for me right now. It's so important for me and like how I want to, you know, like try to like hold my position and everything. Like on teams, like why I'm always like putting in 14 to 16 hours a day, literally playing, watching VOD, and always like trying to get better just, just for me is because like what people don't understand is I'm a Canadian. I'm living in the United States lawfully on a visa. Once I get off a team because I, what, did bad? Guess what? Let's I get back. sent back home. I don't want to go back home. <laughs> I don't want to go back home to Toronto. <laughs> yeah. Damn, I Canada's that trash. Gotta follow, gotta follow the Damon Karma route. Time Canada. to find yourself an anime waifu. Can no problem. I'm Dane. I don't want to go back home. <laughs> Yo, I've never heard anybody say that like that. Yo, Canada's that cheeks, bro? I thought Toronto was lit. No, it's so... more just it's more just my like. So he's not going to Ultra, guys. I'm not going to Ultra. But... <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, yeah. No, I've told I've told I've told people that so many times. I'm like, no, I'm not going to Ultra. I'm not going back home to Toronto. Like, so we send that clip just, to Ultra. Just like it, it's just like when I left when I left Toronto back in back in the beginning of Black Ops Four. I was in, like, my worst state of my life in my entire, like, literally just undeniably. And, like, when I got to Dallas, moved in with, like, Alec and stuff like that, like, I started, like, noticing that my, like, uh, mood was just becoming way better. I was becoming more happier. I was, like, you know, just, I was starting to live life rather than survive it. Yeah, that's good. Uh, but, I mean, it was, it was just, it was super nice, but, you know, that's... You think that it was just due to being around someone that was like like-minded like you as a competitor and just i mean just yeah that that was like a really big thing for me as well being around alec like i think it was really nice like because alec's just like a dweeb and like kind of like helped me like open up out of my shell <laughs> and you know kind of like just help me be myself and i think that was like a big thing for me uh that i need to improve on and you know, learn to kind of get around that, but yo, random you know, question. In Black Ops 4, was it weird living with someone that you weren't teaming with at all? Like, oh, just... oh no, it helps me literally keep my sanity because that that, <laughs> LG, that LG team. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna bring that up at some point too. Because oh yeah, yeah. If you wanted yeah. to bring that. You guys did not get along very well at all, and then it was in the off season why like people were roasting about it, but I put like the Huntsman lower on my list is because I just knew you guys didn't get along the season before, and then. The very next season, you were team with Matt, with Matt again. I was like, how? It was it was like one of those situations that I don't <laughs> understand. Like, well, not like the like the LG situation. Like, people like wanted to bring up the like the track record, right? Like, of me like being benched and like 
um, always, always about the track record and like how like I got be- or how I benched myself on United bench or somebody said I benched myself on LG, which just wasn't true. But you know, the only the only time that like me getting benched that I ever you know literally regret completely is the is the United situation. Like, bro, me and Alec were literally joking about it yesterday. Like, he was bringing it up in my face, and I was like, dude, trust me, I know. Stupidest mis- mistake I've ever made. If we went to champs together, we probably would have won, compl- mm-hmm. like, easy. Like, You guys were nasty. Yeah. But um, that LG situation, when I got benched, I was literally sitting there jumping for joy. I was literally fucking <laughs> headbanging. <laughs> I, was, I was sitting there, I was like, bro, get me the fuck off this team. Like, I would... that bad. I, I was on like I was on that team, and at that time I was working out with you know Mochilla, uh, Steve, and Adam because just that's in a all because bad, bad place. Because <laughs> uh, I mean, because they were just they were in my apartment complex, so I was always yeah. working out with them every single day, and like it was it was like generally helping like my mood and like you know helping me as a person like grow, and every single time I remember. I would get I would get back from the gym, you know, and when you get back from the gym off pre workout or something like that, you just you're jolted. <laughs> like you're in a you're in a great mood, like everything's going, everything's flowing, you're just like, let's go. Like had a had a protein shake right beside me, like I was ready to go. I'd get on. Somebody's late an hour and a half. <laughs> and if it wasn't somebody late being an hour and a half, someone's trolling. And if it's not someone trolling, <laughs> then like the scrims are chalked. And I'm like I'm sitting there just like holding it in. Like, I'm like, no, I'm going to be a good person. I swear I'm going to be a good person. And then I think the final click in my head was, holy fuck, I want off this team, was we didn't scrim two weeks before London. The event. Two weeks. We just didn't scrim. Just not once. I was like, oh, that's cool. Dude, just everything that you've said in the beginning of this show, all the things that you were talking about, your mentality, the way you are as a competitor, all your teams, everything. And to hear that, it just yeah, I'm just imagining sense. your blood boiling day in the and day out. The polar opposite of everything he wants was his LG team from Black Ops. Oh, it was it was so bad. Like I was holding I remember holding in like we would go like four maps, right? Like in scrims and like people are just trolling the whole time and I'm like keeping it in like you know, I'm in a good mood. Like I'm in a generally good mood. And then by the fifth map they keep trolling and not trying to take it serious and we're getting fucking smoked. Like we're just getting destroyed. And then by the fifth map, I'm like, fuck you guys. You guys just pissed me the fuck off. I was in a great mood today. I was like, why the fuck did you guys just kill my fucking high? Yeah. I mean, I remember back then thinking like, dude, this guy's a maniac when I would watch like clips and stuff of you raging. And then like in hindsight, though, like I would lose my mind, too. So I mean, I, I understand that's yeah, man, that's fucking crazy. And, you know, we have here on the stock a lot of your teams end in ruins and they look like great teams and then they just end in ruins like can you like talk us about a couple of those teams like what happens and from your perspective well, people let's would... start with let's start with like the united team because you guys were legitimately like god like a infinite yeah. bro yeah. that was the one team or one of the like one of the two teams that like we played together as a team like we were a fucking team like we were a unit and like we that team that team was i think the biggest peril for it was uh back then justin silly fargo oh, he yeah. didn't take it serious whatsoever <laughs> like at all like i mean he he's admitted it himself you know i love justin as a person and he's he's improved on these things completely like uh and like you know tenfold and like actually like generally kind of listen to like what i had to say and like i'm really happy about that but Justin didn't care whatsoever back then. Um, I feel like for me, it was I was just in such a bad spot, like mindset wise, not like in game wise. That like I kind of had like no safe space, you know. Like my in my like out of game life was just severely fucked. My in game life was just like kind of crumbling because like we were just raging all the time, and like that was like part of me as well. Like I was like kind of like a cause of it as well. And, you know, it was just a toxic, like, from both fronts, you know? And, yeah. like, I kind of, it was, like, one of those things where, like, I just needed a way out. And, like, I just made, like, a stupid decision in that kind of moment that I regret a lot. That I wish I could go back and, you know, not make. But, you know, got to live and let learn. Not really much yeah. I can do. Think it's your biggest mistake? And then Biggest mistake I've ever made. I'll regret <laughs> it from the day I die. It's yeah. the stupidest thing I yeah, will... So you- 
that's the one time you actually bench yourself. You were considered like the best, if not the best player in the game, like a, the second best player in the game, whatever you were considered at the time. You easily could have gotten silly drops. You know that if you wanted to, you could just be like, listen. So that that you think is that's your crazy. biggest COD regret? Yeah, no, it's yeah. not even close. I was not even blown close. away during that time, bro. Dude, you've been involved in some crazy. I was shocked. Shit. I was shocked by that too. No, that like, was that. Was, you yeah. might have been the first person at that time, by that time, to like actually bench themselves going into a major COD tournament. That never happened. Yeah, nobody fucking could believe it. They're like, "Holy fuck, this guy has balls." Yeah, we're gonna need a gunless uh, documentary, bro. We need a, <laughs> this guy is crazy. <laughs> it's <is> crazy. <laughs> it's, this shit's hilarious. Um, but yeah, man. Uh, and I think you just gave us like a lot of perspective on sort of like your mindset and how it doesn't always translate well into teams because there is like the culture in Call of Duty where. Yes, people are starting to take it more serious. They're being like more on time. You know, it's more professional. But there still is the culture in Call of Duty where it's like friendship. Like people don't like to be, you know, in uncomfortable situations. People don't like uncomfortable discussions. People don't like to be, you know, the hard talk being yelled at, telling them they were doing something wrong. A lot of people have individual egos because they've been on so many different teams. And that culture in Call of Duty won't go away for a, a little bit longer. So until all these, you know, other kids coming up learn. Um, so it's probably created a, a bit of a struggle for you. Like, do you have any teams in mind that you wish you could go to that you think it wouldn't be a struggle? Um, <laughs> <laughs> as I tell, as I tell my stream, every time they ask me something about what team I'm going to, 10k gifted. <laughs> All right. 10k Ten, gifted. I chat, so go. somebody hits me with 10k gifted. <laughs> Yeah, you can. If somebody gives you 10k gifted, I'll I'll be all for it. There we go. How about the first letter for one gifted? Oh my! One gifted for the first letter of either the city name or the team name. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> hey, there we go, so, chat. See, look, we already got a little bit of info. There is a team in mind. <laughs> see, you saw that pause. We love to see it, but that's all you guys are going to get today. I promised them. I wouldn't pry there. Let's, let's go. <laughs> let's go for though. So after you join phase and like that team doesn't really work out, uh, you ended up on echo Fox, right? Oh uh, yeah. In World War two. How did that happen? And then you transitioned before you transitioned to rise, which was obviously a really good team that people were asking about. Um, the echo Fox team was one of the situations where uh, honestly, I, it, it wasn't really anything I could do. It was I uh, getting on every single day. Like I was, how I like thought of it is I got on every single day and I was trying to like improve and play, um, and try to like you know tell people what we're doing wrong, and like back then, uh, it was like a breath of fresh air, you know, like it was kind of like going into a new game, new team, and everything like that. Like I was trying to be like positive and remote. Wow, that literally super fire <laughs> backfired on me so hard. <laughs> I remember getting on every day and like, I'd be like, we're doing this wrong. And Bryce is just like, nope. And I'm like, what do you mean? He's just like, nope. You're like, nah, you're not, you're not right. And I'm like, like, I would just kind of take it with a grain of salt and be like, you know what? Whatever. We're good. Just keep it going. <laughs> um, it just, to, you know, prevent like any kind of like arguments and stuff like that. Getting shut down every single time or not being like, you know, listened to, um, obviously reflected in my stats what i had like a 0 0.8 0 0.9 yeah. literally over and over and over again uh it, it's actually a fantastic situation because um just me as a player i learned so much from that situation is that if i'm like if people just aren't listening and people like listening to me and like doing the things that like i try to like preach and talk about uh like i just get fucking shit on like i just get absolutely fucking shit on <laughs> Like, my stats are just do so bad. Like, if people just aren't, like, doing the stuff that, like, you know, we're talking about and, like, telling people to do, and, like, we're just kind of running around and just doing whatever we want, like, my, like, 1.2, 1.3s that you guys see, they plummet all the way down to 0 0.8. <laughs> and that's that's a that's a thing that I learned from, uh, from my, like, Echo Fox team is that, like, you know, if people... People aren't gonna like you know put in the time, the effort, and like the drive to like kind of like improve themselves yeah. in game. Then like I just like I just I won't like kind of like mesh with them. And, like I just won't do good. Like that's why that's where kind of like where I you know shined on my rise team. So question uh, about you know just watching man because I'm sure you've been watching all the games and stuff like that, and you've probably put a closer eye onto like all these teams right? Like watching these guys play. Like you're probably 
paying more attention now than before. I feel like because when you're not competing, you're or when you're competing, you're so focused on your own team. Uh, yeah, I'm definitely looking at other teams and like kind of like seeing like their faults and the stuff that they do and improve on. So it's always e it's always easier to for me. Uh, obviously, actually not, not probably for me, for probably for anybody to, even like you guys, like you guys could look at like a mini map and be like, all right, they're messing up here or like yeah. they're messing up here and you can like learn stuff like a lot easier than you can from playing. It's like, just, that's how backseat gaming is. Yeah. So, um, oh, go ahead. I was no, no, you're good. Yeah. Cause that leads me to the next part of that where like, I'm wondering like now that you're sitting back and watching more, if you're noticing like what teams have major issues that you don't think they can overcome like what teams right now in the league other than obviously like your your gorillas and stuff like that you think you can't fix their problems and need to make a change um oh it's very it's a very weird situation when uh they what they brought in chino because on optic because mm -hmm. what he's just he's just not like a sub you know like i just when you think of chino what do you think you think an AR, AR player. Yeah. Like, and it wasn't like he wasn't like, like when I played against him on my Rise Nation days, right? Like, uh, and he was like the flex for the, actually, no, I don't know who was the flex for the TK team. I still don't know to this day <laughs> because it switched so like frequently. I'm not kidding. But that team, like it was every single day, like Chino ran the sub sometimes or like Lamar ran the sub sometimes. And it was just like, like neither of them are natural flexes whatsoever. So mm -hmm. it was it was a weird situation when you bring in Chino and put him in a role where I guess he has to do a lot of the dirty work that um that like needs to be done since like you know you kind of want your Kenny TJ even like Dash you kind of running around and getting the kills while like you know someone has to do the dirty work you know. Yeah. But yeah. like I just don't like I just feel like you put. Any, or you just put like kind of like a sub player in front of Chino, uh, you know that team probably gets a little bit of better results. Because I just when I see Chino with a sub, I don't think like he just has like the pace or like match to like do it. No, I get it, especially uh, games played. What what else? Um, what uh, not LAG Toronto. Uh, um, I'm just wondering if your perspective's changed a little bit. Like you're watching these teams, like, oh man, I could fix them for sure. Fix them for sure. I mean, <laughs> uh, my chat tells me every single day I could fix every single team. Jesus every Christ! <laughs> every podcast we have, they think that you're going to whatever team the person is. What well, I've I've heard so many things like, oh, you could go, you could go to Optic and like you know fix their issues, or you could go, oh, you could go to Seattle and fix their issues, and I'm just like. Seems like you guys want me to fix issues. Why, like, why the fuck do I have to go into a team and fix a bunch of issues? <laughs> <laughs> like, like a lot of internal problems here. Like, uh, feel like I'm back on my envy or what well, Black Ops Four envy days, where I'm literally oh, going in and trying to fix, fix and fix a problem that like. God, that team was ass. Just... Yeah, we just oh, that we team just, was we just let that team slide. You got thrown oh, into that... the ringer. Oh yeah, shout out shout out LG Steve for that one. That we were the two biggest he was. gunless fans during that time because you were actually nasty, but man, that team was garbage, brother. What oh yeah, no, nah, I there? was I was disgusting. I single handedly brought a fucking team to a pro league. <laughs> what? Well, anyone anyone disagree? At a one point five, one point six. What, at Vegas? Uh, at Vegas? Yeah. I, I had that. the most damage in the game. I, literally the most remember, damage in the whole entire the tournament. One-man like, army, hey, do, you remember what, do you remember we were we were getting toasted? Because I remember that event, and I was uh, like, we were. I'm pretty sure Pierce just played the best event ever. But but Brandon Dash Best event ever. Well, because we like called the, you the best in the game at the time, so yeah, we got fried. Dash, had the god stats, and they won the tournament. And it was like, <laughs> we were getting torched. I got Bro, roasted <laughs> harder after that tournament because of that statement. Harder than I've ever gotten roasted before in my life. And I remember, honestly, exactly the conversation. I got asked who's the best player in the game. And I went, honestly, you know, I think Gunless is the best player in the game for what he had to do for his team. And Dashy is a close second. And then John, John said after that as well, he was like, he broke down like, why? And then our mentions were fucking torched at that time do you remember that john that was like two months yeah two months yeah. we couldn't live that like they were just frying us there's only there's only that's the only tournament that i would really pride myself on being saying i fucking 
Like, I don't, like, pro be like, oh, yeah, I fucking carried them. Like, this is the only tournament where I'm like, bro, I fucking grabbed them by the neck and I said, we're fucking going to the pro league. Let's go. <laughs> like, fucking get, like, I don't fucking care what you have to do. Like, stop. Just fucking get some kills. And I'm literally drop. I drop streaks every single map almost. Yeah, that was that was a lit that was a lit time in COD. Actually, like people, <laughs> the way people like describe that event was is like I almost dropped better better stats uh, stats than Dashy, um, and they're like, no, but you didn't. And I was like, bro, <laughs> I literally had to play what from top sixteen losers all the way to down to top four. Do you know how many matches that is? And I managed to still have a point or one point five and the most damage. It's way easier to have a better KD and play less. That's and have true. more damage. Very true. There's yeah, but arguments. I've seen you on those runs before. You did that at Seattle. Whenever you're, whenever you go through those long tournaments, you just start frying. Yeah, but me That's and us, I'm gonna be honest. Me and Austin were fucking torching everybody. <laughs> like that was just like a fucking like TJ, dude. I remember TJ going into Sunday, bro. He had a point six, and I still <laughs> thought, yo, TJ, you're good. You're fucking chilling. Like, let's fucking go. Like, let's go, you fucking fat ass. <laughs> <laughs> did we talk about uh oh we did talk about rise a little bit Man, we never yeah. talked about the end we didn't talk we about didn't the end about, of rise though yeah. people want to know about the end of like because you guys were considered like close to a dynasty basically yeah you just first, need a couple place, more first place second place and then just the end like whatever happened at champs like can you talk about that at all uh i mean from your, from your definitely from my perspective it definitely went all kind of like downhill i think I still think to this day, I was literally thinking about it before coming on the car cast. I still think to this day that, like, bro, uh, I think Austin is, like, a really good teammate. And, like, I agree with him on pretty much almost everything. Um, you know, like, in-game COD and, like, all that, right? The one thing that I just did not agree with Austin on is, like, it's the one thing that I'll just, I'll, I'll never be able to understand, I guess, with anybody is, like, when you tell him you when you tell him he does something wrong, he just can't admit it. He just cannot admit it deep down in his soul. <laughs> like smile. something something deep down in his soul just does not allow him to admit he's wrong. And if he actually like I don't know if like he's actually fixed that or not, but like that's the only thing that like I literally had a problem with. I'm like, bro, I was like, no no person in the world is perfect. It's impossible. It quite literally is impossible. He's a really like, good at debating too. You guys probably got into some oh, crazy. Oh, bro, he's crazy. Well, they had a whole team full of, except for TJ, oh. but like Danny too. Oh yeah, Danny. Yeah. Yep. And then whoever side Danny took just ended that conversation every time. I bet. <laughs> then he's oh like, no, there's <laughs> a lot of the a lot of the arguments. I still think is funny to this day. Is like it wasn't like me and Austin. It was a lot like Dan and Dan and Austin. It was like Dan would Dan would say something like we're doing this wrong, and Austin would be like, and then kind of like counterfeit it. And then me and Teej would just be sitting there calling each other fat. And then, like, literally they would be losing full because we're not trying. Um, <laughs> team had to be hilarious, bro. Oh, no. It was what it was comedy. Team. And then, like, whenever – I would inject, like, whenever I needed to to, like, say, like, the things that we're doing wrong or, like, you know, what I, like my input to see, like, everything like that. Because um, there's, like, a lot of times where uh, I feel like – you know, people's communication can always be better, like, in in game. And I feel like that's always, like, a very weak uh, suit that a lot of professional players have. And Austin uh, triggered me one day because, like, he didn't call out something that, or, that he was doing. And I was, like, one away from streaks. And, like, I died. And I was, like, bro, Austin, why the fuck did you not call that out? And he's, like, you have a mini map. And I was, like, <laughs> I literally immediately was, like, oh, yeah. I, like, I, I immediately just said, I can't win. I can't win with you. You know what? You know what I'm thinking right now, though, is like, even though that sounds kind of frustrating and stuff, if you had a team where, you know, like that again, where you had like an Austin or an Looney and people who are very intelligent cop players who can get in arguments and get over it, like that might be the best environment for you, like possible in COD because they will understand where you're coming from. Like when you rage out, they're like, yo, I, I do this shit too. Like, He's trying to get something across here. He's not trying to be a dick. Like, you almost need a team like that of at least two other people so the whole vibe conversation never becomes a thing. You know what I mean? Like, do you, yeah, do you miss no. that? I, I definitely I definitely do miss that because, yeah. like, in that environment, like, that just gets me in my groove because, like, everyone's thinking about winning. Everyone's thinking about doing, like, the things that need to be done. Everyone wants to win as badly as, like, you know, the next person sitting next to them. 
And that's like just like that's just like a great like mindset to be in. Like, why I think like John can agree with me on this, but like other esports, uh, other esports like League of Legends, Counter Strike. I I don't know about Overwatch, but League of Legends and Counter Strike. Like, if you do something wrong like multiple times, like one year they're gonna get replaced, or two. They're just gonna be like, "What the fuck are you doing?" Like the coaches are gonna get mad at you. They're gonna scream at you. They're gonna be like, "Dude, you're doing this over and over again." Like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, that's why like COD is like considered a joke in that aspect, where it's like, "Oh, like you need to have good vibes," and it's like, bro, in, in the in in Korean or in Korean LCS, like, do you think they're just sitting there like good vibes? I'm pretty sure there's like multiple articles that sit in there like, bro, it's like some of the most toxic relationships ever. But why is Korean LCS considered like? what the most competitive and probably best like region in the world the crim de la crim of esports brother yep yeah, yeah i mean it just sucks because there's not a lot of players out there like that that are for you like in cod right now to team with so uh, it's a tough situation nah, yeah, exactly yeah well, there's I mean, not a lot of dan's those... there's not a lot of austin's there's not a lot of us yeah <laughs> there is there is definitely not a lot of dan's austin's uh what i feel like crim scored it like that as well yeah he is there is, he there is. are some definitely but a lot is. of them there's retired definitely, there's definitely those players that are out there a, just, lot, a lot of them retired though that's that's the tough part well, those guys are, what you are said, i think that because of what he said where it's like a lot of cod is like about vibes and like it's just along it's with your teammates, yeah. that if those players stop being like amazing basically they stop frying all the time they're the first person to get rid of like, you know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. while the vibey guy can maybe not play as well, they'll still keep him around for a longer period of time while people like Pierce have to fry. Well, look at Danny. Like, I think he's fry. a prime example of a player who obviously Dan is still good, but like he used to be undeniable. So if he's fucking roasting and telling you what to do and everybody else is pissed off about it, like you still can't get rid of him. But look at Dan now. Like, yeah, he's not the player individually that he once was. He's still nasty. He's not the player individually once was, and he gets benched, which is like, it's crazy. You know what I mean? So soon a lot of the people that are like that won't be here anymore. So it's up to some of these players. I to mean, that's just that's just pure just pure winning mindset. It's like, that's that's just competition right there. Like, you just got to – like, that's, that's the shit that I respect that the most is like – when you get on every single day and play, right? Like you're putting in, like for me, it's I'm putting in 14 hours a day over and over and over again. I want to win. Like I'm think, I go to bed thinking about COD. I wake up thinking about COD. And I just, I, I always think about every single time before I get on, like how I'm like supposed to like get better and everything like that. And it's just like, a lot of those vibey like players are just like, that's just not how they are. Like they're just not fundamental, fundamentally built like that. Yeah. Like Austin, Dan, well, uh, you know, they like they put in the time and the effort to be good, and you know, they like pride themselves. Like even Alec, like Alec, you know, prides himself on putting like a, in a shit ton of time. And like that's that's the shit I can actually respect when people are putting in the time, the effort to get better, and willing to listen, willing to, you know, improve the things that they suck at, and prove and and actually reach their potential. Bro, you have no idea how happy it makes me when people realize their potential. It's like, let's fucking go. Like, bro, this guy could be disgusting if you just fix, like, the like that one bad thing that, like, most players have. Yeah. Do you have any teammates that where you where you saw that where, where you're just like, maybe they weren't the best player in the world, but they reached their potential? Like, they, they worked hard to reach their potential, and you were oh, just, dude, like, happy to I, team with them? Yeah, Nick. Classic. Oh. Uh, Nick is the only person that I don't blame in that whole LG situation. Nick, every single day wanted to get better. Every single day wanted to actually get, and got on and like actually with a positive mindset every single time. Nick literally gets flamed every single time about that situation about how like you know he's done bad yeah. on that team like put up like a point or point seven point eight. But like that's just not his fault. <clears throat> like he just didn't. Nick is the type of person that needs to be like playing the game a lot and people need to be taken seriously. And giving constructive criticism, like he, dude, he was always willing to hear people on like what, uh, what he needed to improve on, and like, bro, that's that's a hundred percent, like, great teammate. Mm. Never got mad at Nick one time. Nick's just Nick's just a good guy. Love to hear that. Well, I'm gonna do a quick oh, wow. plug for the call-ins. Um, once again, thank you everybody who for tuning in. 
Um, we're going to do some call-ins at the end of this episode. So um, if you want to come and ask Gunless a question, Big P, uh, you can type exclamation point call in the chat. It'll explain it to you. And exclamation point Discord to get in here and ask a question. Um, I believe, John, you also took point on the Reddit thread. So if you want to pull that up and start bringing up some of those questions. All right, we we're just going to read off. Well. We're going to read off a couple Reddit questions to you, Pierce, if you can answer them or pass up. Up to you, of course. Um, if you could go back and change one thing during your time on the Huntsman, what would it be? Uh, hmm. Played more in the beginning of the game. I think that's it. Okay. I think I I think I played a little too less in the beginning of the game because the mini map. Ooh, the mini map got me. Oh, you guys, yeah, you right guys know. Oh, that's <laughs> yeah, horrible. Crazy. Oh, also, the mini, the mini map. Every single day, I got so mad because like I just could not play it. I could not. Pub. I could not pub. I just yeah. couldn't pub. Yeah. And like there was no CDL playlist back then, so it was yeah. like what play free for all. Actually, I don't even think you could play free for alls back then. Well, I was. Geez. It was. It was. It was very bad. And honestly, that's one thing that I wish I improved on. I mean, like. Other than that, I think that's the only thing. Like, people are probably going to say, like, could have had, uh, what, like, a nicer tone and stuff like that. It's like, <laughs> you get on, you get, you get on, you get on every single day, 14 hours a day, every single day, just grinding away. And, like, you know, like, every day I was like, this, maybe today's going to be a good day. Ah, it's not a good day. <laughs> maybe the next day, ah, it's not a good day again. And, like, when you're putting in that many hours every single day slaving away and just to, like, just to keep losing, you're just like, oh, like, it's just so demoralizing. Because mm -hmm. you just feel like you just feel like you're just wasting your time at that point. Okay. Um, and before we ask the next one, chat, we are going to talk about the next event after the call-ins. Um, I just didn't want to kind of jump ship from all the topics. Just thought I'd clarify that for you guys real quick. All right. Next question. With how things have gone down on his past teams, does he now feel the need to change his attitude slash approach when dishing out criticism or dealing with teammates? Mm. One of her, yeah, one of my friends recently gave me an analogy that, like, yeah, I told I told you guys this. Like, you know, imagine you tell like you know you tell your brother or sister or something like that to. Feed the dog, right? Like for three to four days, or sorry, you tell them the first time, you tell them the second time, you tell them the third time. But the fourth time, you're gonna scream at them, right? Logically speaking. Yeah. What you're just? Are you just gonna tell them, you know, nicely? I'm genuinely you're asking. At him. No, you're probably yeah, get mad. I mean, yeah. What? You're probably gonna scream at them. You you're you're probably you're probably gonna get mad. You're probably gonna get a little bit frustrated, right? Absolutely. And I feel like a lot of people do not understand that whatsoever, but. Like, they do that themselves, and then they look at me, and they're like, that guy's a douchebag. And then you're just like, <laughs> and then I'm just like, like, what, like, I, like, there's just, there kind of just is no winning in that situation at all. Like, people, like, that's why I'm saying, like, thinking logically in the COD community is just so stupid. Like, you can't think logically in this community, because everyone's just like, he's not good vibes. I don't like his tone. I don't like it. I don't like it one bit. <laughs> he said something that I did not like in a bad way. So I think that answers this question. No, he will not. Change. He's gonna be himself and try to improve the team. Like I, I just can't. I can't be someone that I'm not. I like. I, I can't. That. I cannot. Like there was, there was days when I would, uh, like on the Huntsman, where I was like being super positive and everything like that. And I was like waking up and like we were still fucking getting absolutely smoked. And I was sitting there, I was like, well, like being negative, being positive, like we're still getting smoked. So what like we were winning maps when like I was telling people what they were doing wrong and we were losing. I, I don't think we won a map when I was when I was telling people what they or actually being positive about things. Like I remember there was like a whole week. Obviously, I can't even show it anymore because I had to delete all my stuff on Twitch uh D dmcas but there was like a whole week where i was being super positive you know constructive criticism and everything like that and trying to be like you know a good teammate just to just to see kind of like uh, you know just tr an example like just to see if like anything would change right 
bro, we got smoked even harder. Like we didn't <laughs> win maps. Like we like we kept get we got smoked even hard. I'm not kidding when I say that. Like I was sitting there, I was like, holy shit. I was like, what the fuck is going on? And then like I would wake up every single day and like I would look at myself in the mirror and I'd be like, I don't like this. Like I don't like this one bit. Like I literally stopped recognizing myself. I was like, I feel I felt like I was literally killing myself just for other people. Yeah, I mean, I respect it. You know, you've been real since day one. Even when you're in a bad situation, he's like right there. Somebody asked you, you know, would you go back and change it? And you're like, nah, I would have been the same. I would, I would have changed <laughs> shit. I respect he it. Is who he is. Yeah, I, I, I am who I am. Like you know, like me, bro. Like I was just like I just need people like you said. Like you know, those like yeah. Dan's, those Austins, and stuff like that. Like around me, so like. We can scream like at each, well, not scream at each other, but have like kind of like a, a or a, a conversation where like you know it could get heated and stuff like that. And you know, at the end of it, like me and Dan are watching anime together on the TV together, just chilling, having a good time. Like no Random. one's taking it serious. You know, another guy like that randomly is accuracy. Yeah, I swear, because me and accuracy would we used to like curse each other out. Blah blah blah. Fuck you. Duh, duh, duh. And <laughs> like, all right, duo, like, let's go. What are we doing? We're gonna go get sushi. I'm like, yeah, let's go. Like he was cool like that, and Ken's the, like that too, where you could just cuss at each other out and just move on. Like they're just trying to win. I had like, people yeah, like that too. Some... Except up? I had people like that too. Except the one person, because I was usually good about that. I'd, I'd rage and I'd get over it. And we'd be chilling. Except yeah. Rambo. When Rambo raged at me, <laughs> it would piss me off. He's the only <laughs> one who legit, and I love Ray. But when he would yell at me, I'd be like, Ray, like you're gonna tilt me bro like i'm gonna get tilt. <laughs> hey, i would tell him big right you're gonna trigger me man please chill uh, hey, just make me lose it but let's do like a couple more questions from uh, reddit right, on a lot of note pierce what game would you compete in professionally if cod wasn't your main game mm, i'd like to say else or league of legends but honestly i don't think uh, that would ever happen but <laughs> counter-strike i felt like the little time that i played counter-strike i was actually pretty filthy at it but I was more of a snap. I'm more of a snap player more than anything, and I guess that's not really good. Like where like you just flick on people. You could do that on CS. You could be an opera. Be the uh, I just can't. I can't like. I can't get behind the, the the thought of like moving your arm like left and right and stuff like that. How the like how like the players the do whole that. Mouse pad. Yeah. Yeah. Like that. That thought process literally confuses me. <laughs> like I tried doing it multiple times, and I'm like, "Holy shit, I'm getting shit on." <laughs> but I They're mean, yeah, like there's games. like I would go into like one v one, like you know the one v one arenas, and like a lot of the people that were high ranked, I would literally just shit on them, mm-hmm. and like I would literally not play, uh, I would literally not play CS whatsoever. I just, I don't know, just good at fl- good at flicking and snapping on people. Fortunately, this game is not uh, a game where you can flip a flick and snap on people. Uh, do we have questions from Ben yet and ready for Yeah, them? we have hel- we have the most amount of call-ins we've ever had. Oh, and- brother, let's get to this then. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. So um, to let everybody know, we were supposed to keep the show at one hour today. Not going to happen. We're going to get two hours. So, yeah, <laughs> screw it. Um, I am going to let Ben know that he can bring people in. So I have to go up here. Um, but if you do want to do a call in exclamation point call in, it'll explain how to get in here and then exclamation point discord to get in here and ask your question. Uh, Is Ben just sitting down there just having a conversation? Yeah, he's vetting them to make sure they don't he's, say he makes crazy. sure that nobody comes in here and super trolls. <laughs> it's, it's impossible to stop, you know, if somebody really wants to do it, they can like that motherfucker. We have, no, I'm kidding. But anyways, <laughs> we have a lot, a lot of time. All right. Wait, so, I actually... We have our first call in in here, Mike Twelve Fiori. What's going on? What's up, guys? What up, dude? Where are you from? How's, How's it going? How's it going? From Connecticut. There we go. What's up, man? What's your question? Got a question. What is your favorite event you guys have ever attended? All right. Sorry, what? Your favorite, favorite event, event you've ever attended? Uh CW Old Way 2017, uh, back in IW. Uh, it. It was. It's still my favorite win of all time, and it'll always be that. Cause I think right there at that moment, uh, like when you, I just needed the money so badly. Like, yeah. yep, yep. To uh, the point where, life. like, it was. It was just life changing money. At one and two it was just like, at the age of sixteen, seventeen, like I, I was kind of just you know starting to, um, 
you know, take care of myself. Like I was forced into being an adult. And by the age of 18, 19, what I was like, yeah, like in IW when we won that, like I needed that money. Like I needed it. Like I, I, I needed to pay bills, needed to pay my apartment, my phone, my internet, like all of this stuff. And like winning that increased my salary, gave me that money, you know, just, it just kind of like spiraled my life into just a way better mm. uh, situation. That's what's up, man. That's, that's Where are you, John? Uh, uh, <laughs> Uh, I want to say uh, Nats, Ghost, Ghost oh, Champs. No, no, no. <laughs> oh, not Nats. Nats. Was, Nats, Nats only was cool, but it was Vegas, and I wasn't 21. Uh, uh, oh, dude, that was an L. Ghost Champs as is well. Was fucking just. I just thought that tent. The first time I walked in there, I was gonna be so disappointed when I walked into that tent. You remember that on top of the roof? Ed? Yep, yep. I was like, what and the fuck? We're playing on a rooftop? Cool, bro. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> I walked in there and I was like, bro. This event is fire. That was the best. I still to this day think that was the best event like that at that point had ever been run. There was warm up I think station, so, yeah. Literally everywhere we could play anyone. It was the best. The food the was unreal. The was so spread apart. The food was amazing. Bro. Oh, this event is fire. Ghost Champs to paint the picture is the best main stage like I think we've ever had. No bullshit. I thought, I thought Black Ops uh, 3 was also pretty cool as well. Yeah, you were playing like up had... in the fucking skyscraper. Ew. No way. Bro. <laughs> The go the octagon that we had in Ghost and AW was dude. Do you guys if you guys haven't watched it, go back to like AW yeah, Champs or Ghost Champs. Watch some of the videos and like you could literally see uh, like the, the way they pan the, the way they pan the camera on that octagon and they would zoom in on the player shots. The shit was fucking sick, bro. It was I think it was a hexagon actually, not an octagon, but it was <laughs> those, those events were sick. But that yeah, was, uh, that was like Black Ops too. But remember in Ghost like so even on the side stations. At a normal event, guys, if you've ever been the side stations, people can come up and like actually just talk shit in your ear at a side station. But ghosts, everyone can still see your station, but they had to be like, I, I want to say like 15 feet back. Yeah. So it felt like you were still in your own thing and you were just, you were still shit talking like back in the day when you could shit talk your opponent really face to face, but yeah. you still had all this space to work it with. It was so and sick. And it was just such a cool event. It was so sick. And the stage, the main stage there was crazy. Like, What's so you would, yeah, yeah the, the, not only was like what you played in dope, there was just, the screens were huge. The LEDs were everywhere and it was elevated from the floor. So when you're doing like an interview, there was massive screens behind you with like, it was just fucking sick. It was just, it was sick. I wish we still, we, we still did shit like that. It was like a really special feeling to play up there. That was a dope question, Mike. Facts. That was our first one. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one, bro. You're here for a second, brother. And when are you joining the surge on Thomas? <laughs> oh, you only get one question. Next question. Oh, nah. <laughs> only one question. <laughs> All right. Let's bring the next one. Um, so John, when they're done with the question, I'm just gonna have you drag them out so I can call for the next one. Okay. All right. Where am I moving them to? Yo, I'm just move them down to uh subscriber games. Yo, Alex, what's up, man? Hey, what's up, man? How you doing? Doing well, man. Where are you from? Uh, just from North Carolina. Oh, calling in from NC. I lived there for a bit, man. It's a great place. Yes, Which sir. question? So, uh, my question is uh, directed actually just straight towards Pierce. Uh, after everything that's gone down, like the lack of communication from your teammates and stuff, uh, from like when things were happening with the Huntsman, uh, I wanted to know if Alec is still your favorite teammate of all time, like you previously stated before. Oh, yeah, no, nah, Alec will always be my favorite teammate. I mean, like, I'll never be able to ever kind of, like, hate on Alec. Alec's just, like, one of those persons that, like, or sorry, not persons, people, ah, people that I just could never get really mad at. I mean, it did suck that, like, he kind of didn't tell me about, like, me being drops and everything like that, but I just know that's kind of, like, how Alec is, so, like, mm -hmm. I can't really take offense to it, like, at all, you know? Yeah, for sure. But... Um, yeah, like Alec, Alec kind of just, you know, helped me in more ways than just one. So like, I, mm. I just could never be mad or literally just never be mad at him. Yeah, that's awesome. Sweet. All right. Thank you, Alex. Good question, brother. Yeah, of yeah. course. Thanks, guys. Thanks. All right. Next question. Ben? Who you brought? You got to get next guy. He's coming on in. What up, Akes? What up, Clay? Shout out you guys in the chat. Shout out to, uh. The people who have subscribed to the stream thus far, I appreciate you guys very much. There's a few pros that watch pretty consistently. Eggs, Clay. Slasher, Moody. usually. Yeah, those Slasher's are the homies, man. Here. Yeah. My bros. I mean, let's pull up the viewer list. I see Slacked in here. I see Saints. My boy Docs. Jordan General. It's good. It's good, bros. Jay. 
Oh, hey, there we whoa, go. Whoa, Test facts. What's going on, man? You sound like whoa, you're. Whoa, 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 homie. Hey. Caller, Yo, Test facts. Yeah. Yo. What the hell microphone do you got, bro? Uh, it's AirPods, bro. My bad. I know it's ass. All right. Whoa. What's your question? <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> So we've heard, so we've heard, um, people like Pristini, Gunless, and even Havoc talk about, uh, just mental health issues even while playing, and it's taken Havoc away from it and Pristini away from it. When do you think the CDL will actually invest into the player's health like Astralis does? And okay. Counter I guess I should probably speak to this. Um, yeah, this is more. I think, uh, I mean, I can't speak for the CDL directly because that's not what I do. But uh, I think, you know, that's probably, I mean, it's on everybody, but I think it's probably more so on the organization to provide a, a system for the players. Um, I think the, what the CDL can do is, you know, with the scheduling and stuff like that, so it's not so rigorous, um, maybe it can help out a little bit, which I think they, they did in the beginning of the season when we had, you know, back-to-back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back -to -back weekends, and they slowed it down and made it tournaments and stuff like that so i think they fixed it a bit there but i think it's more so on the organizations did you drag him out of here yeah i did so he can go back uh, his question but his mic was i, I think I th that's yeah. actually a really good question yeah. because in uh question, in overwatch spin. if you guys aren't familiar with overwatch there was a a lot of players were burning out and retiring and, and quitting and stuff <laughs> you're like what the hell's going on and they were coming out with mental health issues there was like a bunch of videos and stuff so that is something to worry about with call of duty especially it's happened a few times so I think that the CDL and the organization should pay closer attention to it before uh, it becomes a, really a problem. I think so the only, th I think the thing that the CDL um, needs, that this is something that they can do, honestly. But I think the thing the CDL needs to do the most is like, you know, support, um, kind of like get like really good, like, you know, ergonomic chairs, like desk, you know, okay, allow yep, players, yep, yep. allow players to like, you know, be able to customize kind of like their setup, like to actually promote like kind of like overall health of like stuff like that. Cause that's actually like, like almost the w most important thing that you should like need to be doing is like, you, like, pe like people don't understand that if like you sit in an incorrect way, like it literally can cause a pinched nerve in your neck, which can rate, like, which can mess up your hand. Like, Bro, Bro, Pierce, not that used to happen to me with the DX racers. Oh. I used to want to, I, I, I had to use a chair from the crowd. I couldn't I sit in the DX you. racer. I had to sit in one of the the WWE like, fold up chairs from the crowd. <laughs> like people, like <laughs> dead ass. Yeah, like people just like I'm telling you, like you know, like back health, like neck health, just like all that's like for me, honestly, like it's super important because like I'm six foot four, like. I'm look, when I'm looking down at a monitor, it hurts my neck. It hurts just like all my overall body because like I have to kind of like sit in a weird way to feel comfortable, you know, or be yeah. able to play. That's the yeah. one thing that I think the CDL needs to improve, like that they can improve on, you know. Everything yeah. else is just kind of like the organization. It's the organization, yeah, for the mental yeah. health stuff, stuff like that. Yeah, I would say what you said and then maybe, you know, scheduling, working with the teams on that. Uh, Crispy Dinosaur, welcome to the show. Where are you from, mm -hmm. man? Hi, hello. I'm from uh, London. Hey, there we go. What, what part? Well, I won that, won that event. What time oh. is it over there? Crispy Dinosaur? Oh, full, full 24. What, what part of London are you from, bro? You from, you from the, the, the ends? Um, Southwest. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's soft out there. But what's your question, bro? <laughs> yeah. So my, <laughs> question, so my question is, it's more of a debate. But, um, a debate, okay. Yeah, so... When comparing the Cold slash EG and Optic Dynasties, how convincing is the argument that the standards of competition were different, therefore Optic was the better dynasty? You no, know, same uh, same can be said when we compare LeBron and MJ. MJ didn't uh, okay, take okay. Okay. I got... KD. No, no, no. We get your question. Listen, 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 listen. I think I Optic's like. the better dynasty, one. But anyways, comparing the two based on their you know, strength of opponents, I think is bullshit. Like it's, it's just, it's relative to the time you played in. You can only be as good as the people that are playing at the time. I hate that argument. I think it's terrible. Like, oh, they played against better people. It's like, it's really how, how fucking good you, they were the best team. Like it's, it's relative to who you're playing against. You can't be like, you can't quantify it. They were the best team. And then optic was the best team. Like, I don't, I don't yeah. like that argument. I, I yeah. think, I think the complexity G was the best one. Because there was a time period when you were just going to a tournament knowing which team was going to win. So, and they were playing good players. I don't, I don't buy that whole argument. That they weren't playing good players. They were the playing great were players. The games were different back then. You actually had to have more of a brain 
then it switched to games like, like AW. The games were better. You, yeah, where you oh. literally could go to a tournament in AW and never have played with your teammates. Yeah, in I was. Tournament. Like, I was about to, You could just show up said. and get second place. That's what Denial did. They there was practice. way more strategy in Black Ops <laughs> 2 and Ghost S&D than there has been in any single COD that has followed it since then. Way more strategy. And it's not even close. So, like... Bro. To say that is, like, and people were damn good at that strategy too. So I don't, I don't, I don't really agree with that. Well, yeah, if you when... think, if you think about it, it's like, like I didn't play back that time, but like I watched a lot of it. But you know, like going into Ghost Champs, like what, like E or not EG, it was Complexity still at the time. Complexity was literally favored by miles, literally yeah, to win are. the event. And, like when you were like watching like all the turn or like the matches go down, it was like holy shit, they're kind of just rolling through everybody. What's going on here? Yeah. Like it was like a bloodbath. Bro. Like you, you don't see like you didn't see that in the like in the optic dynasty where like it wasn't just like a surefire win for them, you know? Like it like you saw that in the complexity dynasty though. Yeah. Like there was a lot of events where there's like holy games. crap, they're just literally just just taking people out. They did that with yeah, Laser on their nasty, team and they bro. did it with Damon on their team. Their team was just nasty. That's why I think that and yeah. the optic dynasty was obviously disgusting. I think it was AW just... was their best game, but even then at that time, phase yeah, I was head about to say was phase. Yeah, but when we compare the two, right? So, like the same same goes for LeBron and MJ, right? I mean, yeah, that you can only play who's in front of you, but when you compare the two, they they have to be variable factors, right? Because MJ never played the Warriors. Who knows how he would have done? Dude, the competition the that MJ played against was fucking nasty. Like, it's like, why do people was, make? Hold on, why? Do, let's just talk about MJ. Defense. No, let's not talk about. No, no, no. For MJ like a second, okay, but like, I just hate that people like act like he played against bums. Like, he played in one of the best eras of NBA history. Like, there was great people that he was going against. Like, we're talking like Charles Oakley, like Isaiah Thomas, Charles, like there's Charles Barkley, Isaiah. Dude, dude, like there was there was good, good great, great, great players, players, players that we will never see again. Like, even have that much time. Like, shit is crazy to think about that people actually think that. Like, he played against bums. That shit blows my mind. And I don't know what y'all be talking about over there. Wait, in London, but uh, Michael Jordan was godlike, fam. So, uh, like, <laughs> well, I right. he was good. But- you know, like the game. Good. Ball. Next question. You know, yeah, <laughs> next question. <laughs> dude, like this is like where <laughs> I hate this discussion. Yeah. All right, all right, yo, yo. Discussion just it's too it's too Michael opinionated. Good. It's just it's Michael just Jordan. Yeah, he was not just good. Not That's good. actually saying he no, was I'm good not, is disrespectful, sure. low key. I know he's a goat, but like the game the game has evolved since then. And all right, peace, bro. All right, uh, <laughs> next question. <maybe. laughs> <laughs> I was I was about to lose it, bro. Honestly, I started sweating, dude. Question. I hate that shit, dude. Michael just, Jordan is good. I hate when like like arguing the two is like okay, but I what hate when they say he played about? against bums. Yo, what's up, Looney? Yo, what's good, man? Good to be is back, bro. Hey, big fan. Welcome back. Welcome back. Big fan, bro. One question for Big P. Oh my god. Who is your favorite teammate on Rise, bro? And if it's not me, it's not a question. It's right there. Not a question, man. <laughs> favorite teammate on Rise. No, no, yeah. actual t- actual question, actual question. All right, bro. You're the best player in IW at one point. You go to phase. You scrim do a lot. Why the hell did you guys uh, wrap the ball? Know it. I know it. I and knew it was coming. On every map. Because we suck dick at uplink. And that was the <laughs> only way we could win uplink. We were disgusting at hard point. But our uplink I remember game, this oh thing. my god, it was horrible. Bro, I stopped scrimming them because they would just, just wrap the ball. They were playing hide and seek with the ball. Dude, that was the only way. That was the only way we could win. That ass, the only way we. Could I just, win. I just didn't scrim them because they're fucking. Just think about that. Ant. You have gunless, enable, attach, and Zuma, Wait, and they're no, wrapping no. the ball. No, they were actually, link. they were actually ass at that time. Even my team I'm, was frying them. Ask, why didn't you want a team with Clay in IW? What? Clay in the chat asked, "Why didn't you want to team with this?" This is this is this is my question, John. Let him answer my question. He bro. answered it though. He said he that his team was asked. We suck dick. <laughs> we have we have 15 more questions to get through, guys. So we'll go yeah. to the chat after. Yeah, Can that was a quick one, here. bro. And uh, you, you didn't answer that first one. You didn't answer that first one. Pierce, That's who's your favorite up. teammate on Rise? Favorite teammate on Rise? Yeah, probably Dan. Hey, ah. all right. Thank you, Dan. <laughs> I just want to hear my name. <laughs> okay. All right, oh. so uh, we got a bunch of fan fans coming in now. Uh, we got this TJ fucking, Halley. Dude, this this fat motherfucker. Oh, you didn't get that last answer, but it's all good. All <laughs> right, my question, t- wait, 
TJ TJ's always TJ's always actually fucking baiting the streams at all the times, you know. He's always asking me to yo when we run Pierce it back. Pierce is scared of his uh of his question. Like, I feel he, like. Yeah, T, yo, Teach Teach always asks when we run it back. <laughs> uh, Teach never Teach never fucking. <laughs> he, he uh, what, what's up then, Teach? Listen, Pierce, my question's for you, bro. <laughs> so why did the Huntsman decide to bench you over someone like Skump? Because based off his of stats. <laughs> And just watch the matches. He has been severely underperforming this season. What? <laughs> oh, God. I got to be fucking fired. Continue. <laughs> Continue. Pierce, he asked you a question, man. What? You know I can't answer that. He'll <laughs> be, be on deck stand to win tell in two seconds. It's There's already no probably way. brewing up on deck stand to win tell, actually. The circle.com. Uh, there's a counter to your old question about Dan. Like, there's no way Dan was your favorite teammate. There's no way. <laughs> now, that he, now that he's out the call, bro. Now that he's at the call? Yeah, yeah. Who's your favorite teammate on Ross? <laughs> I'm favorite fucking out of here, dude. Who's your favorite teammate on Rise? I mean, come on, Fat Bob. Let's fucking. Was it me? <laughs> Wait, did he just switch up? Uh, all right, yo, TJ. <laughs> <He switched laughs> it's all right, TJ. You know it's Dan. Have a good day, oh, bro. Oh, Wait, what? Yeah, you know it's Dan. Oh, listen, I'm out of here. Have a good day. <laughs> PT, get this guy out of here next. Wait, I said, come on, Fat Bob. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't say Fat Bob. <laughs> yo, that was comedy. That whole sequence was oh, great. To oh, answer, to answer Clay's question. Yeah, we got another one in here, but go ahead. Oh, um, to answer Clay's question, if he's still in here, I mean, shit. Since it's all under the bridge, or sorry, you know, water over, under the bridge. I remember the situation when I was like, "Yeah, I want a team of Clay and everything like that," like in IW, and like all the stuff that was going down. Literally, I was getting told, "No, no, 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 we don't like." All the, everyone didn't want to play with Clay on that team, like oh. at all. Ah, so it, wasn't it was you. just so it was, it like was just moving out of you. Well, it was like one of those things where I'm like, I want to do this. And then they're like, no, 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 we don't want to do that. That's and then some I'm just... tea. That's oh, some tea. Shit. So he went to pay. He's like, hey, yo, bro, I, like, I don't want to play with Clay. And they're like, nah, on the low, like, we don't want him to hate us. Just say you don't want to play with him, high key. Him. So yeah. Tommy, attach, enable this. Yo, that's a that, – damn, Clay, T, T. All right, yo, Vinny Gage. I mean, shit, he, yo, won a world, he won a world championship after that. Should be thanking me. Facts. Yo, Vinny Gage, welcome to the show, man. Where are you from? You know, guys, uh, New Jersey. Oh, it's uh, it's what? not, not, not New like York. That? It's not New York. Yeah. Yo, yo, but uh, <laughs> what's your question, man? So uh, my question is, do you think franchise teams should consider having a scout to recruit talent, talented AM players? I think that's mm. what the, I think it's called the general manager. Yeah. Uh, yeah, hey, I was about to say, I was like, I'm pretty sure. Sounds like I'm just an sure. added salary for no reason, yeah. Yeah, it does sound like an added salary for no reason. Like, like what? I, like, professional players do that already, don't they? I mean, the role like of I, a scout is I, to like go to a game and watch a team play. You can just load I mean, up a Twitch stream. You, so. Wait, don't you literally like as like for me? Like, I watch amateurs all the time just to see like, yeah, you know, who's no, discussing yeah. one or and two at the same time. Like, I'm trying to figure out, um, like if they're doing anything in, uh, like correctly on the map. Yeah, I mean oh, yeah. it's it's too easy to load it up online and watch it. Pros usually like watch them. They say he's pretty good, and then they play against them, and then they're like, "All right, this guy is like." They usually say he's a sick joke. It's a good question, though. I mean, maybe yeah. in the future when teams have a lot more revenue coming in. But yo, thank yeah, you for the question, man. Uh, after right, I think that, yes. After that, to do in camera, that entry but... fee into the league. I don't know. Yeah, later, later <laughs> down the line. <clears throat> All right, yo, Bo Josh Horseman. What a name. Yo. Yo, I did. Where are you from? How's it going? Uh, I'm from Nottingham, England. Nottingham. You know, like Robin Hood? Nottingham? Nottingham, like, yeah. Like Nottingham? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, you'd say uh, Nottingham. Yeah, like Robin Hood. Right, yeah, so, like, so, weird, but, uh, so yeah. what's your question, bro? So, you know, moving to like a franchise model, do you think we'll finally get to see the day where... Yeah, you know, players aren't making all the roster moves anymore. We'll actually have more like traditional sports when it's actually sort of a GM and the players don't really get a say anymore. We're already moving towards it. Um, uh, I do think so, yeah. I actually, I think, I think so. 
The issue is the players are the ones playing against the other players a lot more, so they can they can be a better gauge of like of the just the actual talent in the game. And then there's also like the personality thing in COD where it's like if they don't get along, it's just not smart to pick them up, even if it works with the team. So maybe the players will the players will still always have some say in what happens. In the future, I think, I think it'll change though. I think that'd be a long time. I think it's getting close. Two, three years, uh, three years, four years. I, I think. It'll Do you think that should be like an appointed like GM? Excuse me. At some point. Do you think that should be like an appointed GM at some point? An appointed GM. Yeah, like just to make like roster moves. And, yeah, I mean, like, I think that'll be the. the I think I think the current like GMs. I think in the future it will be the people that make the moves and the players won't be as involved. I do think that I believe we're moving towards that. And, you know, slowly even seen a little bit now, like with situations like, you know, I don't, I don't even want to call out names, but yes, I think we're moving towards that. I think we're moving towards that. Um, but yeah. we'll see. We'll see. All right. Let me get the next uh, person in here. Question, brother. That was a great question. All right. So we Bro, have I'm just giving entertainment for no reason. <laughs> Bro, it's been it's been boring on the pine. No bullshit. I'm just I'm kind of just sitting there, just Yo seeking Dagan. any forms of entertainment. Yo, Dagan, what's going on, man? Where are you from? I'm from Kentucky. Hey, there we go. What's your question? Um, I was wondering this question for Pierce. I was wondering, like, what what would be his ideal place to live after retirement? Like, what what he wants to do after he retires? Uh, ideal place? Kentucky. Um, <laughs> no, but I'm sorry. I, I'm, I don't have anything against Kentucky, but ideal place. Um, I think it would be cool to probably, what, live in Texas. But I think for me, a lot of it for, like, my living experiences is, like, I think it would be cool to live in, like, a lot of cities, like, living in L.A. for a year, living in, like, you know, I'm starting to move over to Las Vegas for a year just for, like, the experience, you know? Like, because that's just, like, what life is about. To be a nomad? To be a nomad, you know? Just have a good time. Like, actually have a good time and, you know, enjoy, like, different experiences. Pierce like, is a kindred cause... spirit, dude. What? I don't know. Pier Pierce, Pierce is, is, a... is a kindred spirit. He is, he is, but Pierce is also a competitor, and he's never gamed on the West Coast, so he's only gamed uh, in, <laughs> in Toronto. Whoa, you guys don't understand how bad it is to play on Toronto and Texas internet. Wait, no, Texas internet's good, but like I'm saying, like, when I played from <laughs> Toronto... <laughs> what, 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 what? How bad what? it is to play on Texas now? What? Yeah. What? <laughs> Like no, I'm saying when I played for like when I played from Toronto and I played on the Texas host, I like it was the hardest thing in the world. Plus, at the same time, when I played in Toronto, I only played on West Coast host because Preston and Alec lived in Seattle at that time. So like, and and Justin lived in Vegas, and I was still shitting on people. Mm. Mm. So what? I know how bad it is to play on the <laughs> East Coast from West Coast. It's Word. bad, but. Word. Like at the same time, like when I when everybody lives in Texas, you're never playing on Texas servers anymore. You're playing on East Coast. True that. So it's like you you can never you can never win. Like I'm sitting here playing on New Jersey hosts, and I'm like, okay, I'm getting absolutely tucked. <laughs> well, all right. Because, but they, uh, so everywhere yeah. was the answer to that, Dagan. Uh, I mean, everywhere, but I mean, I think like the, the last final spot that I'd probably live in is probably Texas. Okay. Um, come to Kentucky and dump some money on some horses. <laughs> you can win. You can win some big cash. <laughs> yeah. All right, Dagan. <laughs> thank you for the question, dude. <laughs> I appreciate it. Have a good one. <laughs> what the hell? Derby. All right, let's go. <laughs> well, you're on the West Coast, right, John? Yeah, I'm in Cali. Not for yeah, long. That's what, yeah. Okay. That's what. Yeah, I was better say. That's what I thought. Wait, like grandma used to actually bet on horses like nonstop. I, I know you have a. I used to go to the OTB, man. All right, but our next question's in here. Jake with two E's. Where are you from? Uh, I'm from New Mexico. There we go. What's your question? Uh, it's a question for all three of you, but uh, it's uh, who's one player that you played against that you just like loved playing against them? Because if you beat them, you just like you got to talk shit. Oh man, I had a lot. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Pierce. Like, like, like TJ that? and Skump. Uh, 
Oh, it was definitely fucking Bryce Faceno. <laughs> Dude, um, I got dropped on Christmas. Like, come on. <laughs> like, like. <laughs> oh, you dropped. know, like anyone. I got dropped. I'm not kidding when I say this. I got dropped on Christmas because I remember this site so like. Uh, it was like engraved in my memory because like I was still sick at that time. And like I was like almost fully recovered, and I remember getting a call from Echo Fox, and it was, oh yeah, you're dropped. <laughs> um, and I like I like I was still sleeping, so it woke me up, and I like heard it, it was like, yeah, we're, we're just going, we're moving forward with Aqua. I, and then he's like, do you have anything else to say? And I was like, no, goodbye. And then I just hung up. Wait, who gave you the call? He said, uh, do you have anything else to say? Yeah, what? What the fuck are you supposed to say? <laughs> uh, I, I mean, wait, who called you? Like, uh, sorry. So like Bryce texted me when I, and like, I woke up, looked at my phone and I saw like Bryce text me and I don't know why he did it this way. He said, yo, we have to talk, uh, frowny face. He really said <laughs> a frowny face. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, it was dead ass a frowny face. I was like, what the fuck does that mean? That's like an eighth grade breakup, bro. <laughs> uh, On Christmas frowny. day. Yeah, it was not emoji, no bullshit, not an emoji, oh a frowny God. face. <laughs> He's got a text from a Nokia. Uh, it was not Christmas. It was like Christmas Eve, like Chris, like in the, like nighttime, and like I Jeez. got that text, and I literally was just like, "What's going on?" Call, uh, and then I got the call from I think it was Brett at uh, Echo Fox. Yeah. No, not Brett. Not Brett. It was Daniel. 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 Daniel Deshi. Hmm. And. Uh, I got a call from him, and he's like, yeah, we're going forward with Aqua. Do you have anything else to say? And I was just like, no, goodbye. And then I just hung up the phone immediately. <laughs> the hell? So, I meet, yeah. When I beat, when I went to Rise Nation, and I fucking beat Echo Fox, oh, I had to talk shit. That's the only time I've actually, in my career, talked shit. Let's go. Feel good. What about you, John? Well, and, and, oh, my real answer, I thought about this because I had time there. My real answer is Halifax, and I know no one in this chat knows who Halifax is at this point, but he used to play COD 2 and COD 4, and there was a point where everyone was calling him the best player in the game. I remember and that. Yeah. That was fucking garbage. He was and not I beat garbage. Him every, I literally beat him every single fucking time. Every single fucking time. Halifax sounds like a fucking Canadian name. It's definitely... He's, from Texas. he's definitely Canadian. What? Yeah, yeah, it was garbage. Beat him every time. I, I feel like Texas is one of the players that people love beating. Uh, I mean, some people. I know Study like Study love beating him. I love beating Clay too. I don't think I I'd I'd love to beat Clay. It's just Clay. all just the people. Love... <laughs> <laughs> Dude, Clay, I hate I hate seeing Clay stand up and like stare at the other team. Like, I beat Clay twice in one tournament. This has to be a this has to be a, a huge NRG fan, huh, Jake? Oh yeah, dude, Chicago all the way. <laughs> now, bro. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah, no, wait, I'd love Jake, to thank you for coming. I'd love oh, to be... Wait, wait, what about you? Wait, when you beat oh. Clay and you knock out of the tournament, he doesn't even look at you. He acts like you're he, he doesn't. Yeah, he actually he be, doesn't. He, act, he beats you like, by one point and gets up and starts screaming at you. And like, yeah, what the hell? Fuck that guy, dude. Uh, yeah, for... dude. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, all right. So this is hilarious because I've never had like a super energy fan on the call. So I have so many questions for you, actually. But I'll give you my um. My answer is I had a few people that were like that killer in Black Ops 2. Oh, man. And Ghost. Like, he, people don't understand the amount of torment you used to go through in, like, Black Ops 2 time online when Killa's team was winning events. Like, when Killa was one of the best players in the game, if you played eights and you even went positive one, if you went positive one, he was talking shit, bro. The whole rest of the series, like... Killo would get under your skin to a point where you actually wanted to like slap him across the face. So Killa for sure number one for me. And then there there were some others. Um, Damn, Saints funny. Saints because I was such good friends with them. I used to love beating Saints. Yeah, I used to love just just frying Saints off the stage. Great feeling. Cool. Yeah. Thanks. That was right. fun. Good question. All right, have a good one. Story. Fuck that guy, Clay. All right. Next. Wow, that was a super energy fan. <laughs> All right. Uh... <laughs> oh, yeah. And uh, that uh, the Aches, Aches' team, I, I just wanted to beat them so bad because they thought they were so good. So I used to just stand up and scream. I have some cringe videos yelling at them on, on YouTube out there somewhere. Oh, there we go. There's the next one. Yo, Cardelio. What's good? Hey, how's it going, guys? Oh, I'm from Rhode Island. 
Rhode Island. Rhode wow, you sound Island. really jolly, bro. You happy? Yeah. I'm gas gas to be here. It's a good night. <laughs> there we go, man. What's your question? Uh, so I was wondering with Call of Duty starting to franchise, what's more important for a player, personality or their actual skill? Skill. Their skill. All right, Thanks. next question. Uh, <laughs> personality? Like, do you mean like following or just personality? I mean like your overall personality on a team because obviously oh, skill, like skill, for Call sure, of Duty, skill. you're trying to – it's a business. You're trying to make money. You have to have likable players skill. for the team to be popular, you know? You don't have to be likable like – just like skill, bro. Hundred percent skill. Your team is more popular when your team is good. The only, yeah. the only, the only outlier, of course, would be the Huntsman, where they're just they are good anyways. Don't get me wrong, but they're just gonna be popular. But if you're yeah, no, yeah, like, you're gonna be popular. like, yeah, like that's the only outlier. Like if they weren't good, then like people would still love them. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Skill yeah. for sure, cardio. But thank you for the question. All right, thank you guys. All right. Rhode Island, dude. He was screaming. I mean, <laughs> I mean, like, yeah, it was like that for like the optics, uh, Don or not Dynasty, right? But yo, like yeah, back in Black Ops too. Mm -hmm. Yo, Zahid, what up, man? Guys, where are you from, bro? I'm Toronto. Love that. <laughs> no, he doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I fucking I don't like the city for personal reason, but I'll always well, support. I, I heard I heard Toronto. you lived in Pickerings, but that doesn't count. Pickering does oh, not count as Toronto. Oh shit! That's, that's GTA. Yeah, that's GTA. Yeah, that's not yeah it's yeah. Pickering is like the ghetto. I still think it's funny, is because like when I left, when I was literally like it was a month before I was leaving <laughs> um, Pickering, like to go to Texas. A drug dealer's car literally blew up and took out two cars next to it, blew and I was up. like, oh, that's cool. Sorry. It just blew up. Sitting outside main downtown Toronto is kind of sketch. So, all right. So what's, your, what, what's the right, question? Yeah, what's the question? Small. <laughs> My question on. is: uh, What retired player besides Damon, of course, you want to have teamed with during your career? This is the question just, just for Pierce. Pierce? Correct? Did you not hear it? No, no. no I'm it, was, <laughs> it, it was a <laughs> retired player besides Damon. Would you want to have teamed with during your career? Are you only asking Pierce? Is what John asked. I it, I can know all three of you. Oh, okay. Probably. Yeah, probably fucking. Probably you, John. I think it'd be cap. cool to. Oh, that was cap. That's cap. My cap. <laughs> oh, okay. I'd have that's loved cap. to yell, yell at Pierce and get yelled at. Uh, what? Uh, I mean, if John's telling me what I'm doing wrong, I'm listening. Uh, right. I'm mine's here. for sure. Ah, uh, retired player. Who? Hmm, shit. Who's retired? Let's see. I teamed with Aches. I teamed with. Mine's got to be Rambo. like. Aix no, is I not retired. Rambo. Aix is not retired. That's what I'm like. Nah, Aix is retired, bro. Let's be honest. Um, <laughs> it's got to be Teep for me. Yeah, I see the chat saying that. Yeah, it's got to be Teep. I didn't play with him, and I think uh, it would have been fun. He yeah, just fair enough, plays fair his enough. role, role, and he was really good. So, yeah, Teep for me. I teamed with a lot of people. It's actually hard looking at retired people and being, being like, fuck, uh, who? Especially if you roll out karma. What about Big T? What, what happened to Big yeah, T? I teamed with Big T. Get in love? I didn't. You have? Like, oh, shit. I also think Big T was like severely overrated too. So, <laughs> I yeah. Um, Nade shot, yeah. Team no hurt. Way earlier. Oh yeah, yeah. Nade shot for sure. Yeah, a hundred percent. I wish I would have played with Nade. I would have been live. We'd have been lit. Out of hey, yo, bang bang, let's go. All right, yo, Zahid, thank you for the question, bro. I right, appreciate it, guys. We have a, how many more do we have, dude? Straight, straight. No, we're not doing every single one. We're, all these? No, no, we're, like... we're doing three more. We're doing three more. <laughs> Yo, Trev, what's up, man? Follow CL and Toto on Twitter. What? Okay, next question. Yo, grab Pat. What the fuck did he just say? He just he just said to follow someone on Twitter, but he didn't do a good job because no one. Oh heard my him. god, he scared the fuck. What out a of waste me. of a troll. Whew. All right. <laughs> what a wet. What a waste of a troll. My heart Bro, I see, I see Yo, somebody. R Rob Stroh, what's up, man? What's your question? What's going on? Not much. Uh, <laughs> uh, upstate New York. Okay. Upstate New York. Why? Yep, up in the, down in the boonies. Um, all right, so for a gun list, um, what five qualities would you want in a Call of Duty game if it was a permanent title for a competitive? Good maps. Updated content. Uh weekly or 
at least monthly at the at the very best. Three, um, changing metas, of course. Um, four, a lot of dev support. Obviously, I just named off what two, three things that need a lot of dev support. Um, and what five? Um, probably uh, crowdfunding. Crowdfunding is definitely probably the biggest thing actually out of all of those. Crowdfunding just like bro, you look at Dota. Like I feel like Call of Duty could be on that scale one day. I, I really do. It does that though. I don't think that's ever gonna happen. Yeah. But that would be that would be dope for you guys. Like imagine winning one tournament and changing your life. Like that that's insane. Yeah, that would be crazy. But yeah. All there right. you go. Thank Let's you for the question, Rob Stro. Yeah, thanks for having me. No problem, man. Let's get the next one in here. Bro, I see some I see somebody in there. Yeah, he wants to be dragged in so bad. <laughs> I'll let you guys make this executive decision. I think we should bring him in for the last question. Uh, I think, yeah, the last question, definitely. Yo, best. What's yep. good, man? Yeah, not too bad. I mean, it's 5 a.m. in England, but yeah. yeah. It's late, bro. We appreciate you sticking with us. We're early, I guess. Yeah. What's, uh, what's your question? Yeah. Uh, it's for all three of you. Out of all your teammates, who's been the one that's been, like, influenced you the most out of all of them? Rambo. Hmm. Influence me in game, out of game, in what life and cool. in game, Rambo. Yeah. In life oh, why? Can I have two answers or? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Two answer, like one for life. It's Alec. Two for game. It's Looney. Wait, why is that cap, uh, Jay? What? Um, Rambo taught me so much about life, how to live on my own. In game, it'd be it would definitely just be Looney. Looney's a really good teammate to have in game. We just he like actually sit with you and talk talk with you and go over gameplay with you. Just like to to he's a good teammate, really good teammate. And just always down to like watch VOD as well. Just like yeah. at any time, like if you and like always down to like help you if you ever want help. Wait, I have to address something in the chat real quick. Jay, listen, yes, <laughs> you're one of my favorite. You're my duo, bro, forever. One of my favorite teammates ever. But you didn't teach me anything about like. Cod or life that like that's random but you're definitely like <laughs> my guy and my brother in arms forever bro like we did that together oh but, wow. but, Sorry, but rambo you. taught me like like i learned how to do laundry for rambo <laughs> like, he taught me Whoa. a lot when I, it was the first time i moved first time i moved out of my the first time i moved out of my like where i live with my grandparents i went to go live in the envy house like he asked me who influenced you the most and 100 percent was right learn how to you guy taught me how to make a steak bro Unfortunately, so bad. Continue. It would have been nice to learn that stuff. I was forced to kind of like learn, or like learn that stuff at like a very young age. 18, so. I think it would have been cool to learn that stuff from like somebody, like being like, "Yeah, like I'll show you like how to cook a steak and stuff like that." Bro, when somebody, yeah, dude, when you when you move out like for the first time, you gotta learn a lot of shit. Shit that like now you look back, you're like, "Fuck, I had to learn this shit at one point." <laughs> like simple stuff. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's how it was. That's why a lot of players go through it. That's why those Columbus apartments were in shambles. Remember those things? Oh, Holy shit. It's walking into a player's apartment in the Columbus apartments was disgusting. Yeah, they did. Oh, Learn shit. trust me. Like, literally had, had an aneurysm. Yo, study goes. Ray taught me how to do that, too. <laughs> Steak is my only dish. <laughs> Yo, best. thank you for the question, man. Yeah, no problem. All right. Those cool. I just, I just cannot believe some of the like, some like gamers like just don't have like any like kind of like hygiene. Like uh, so many, so many times when like you're just not cleaning dishes. Like ah. All right. So here's our last question, Patty P. What's good, brother? Where are you from? That's good. That's good. I am uh from North Carolina, but I'm currently <laughs> residing in Los Angeles, California. Living the life out there, bro. How's retirement? Yeah, I heard that dumbass statement on the podcast. <laughs> I, that was worse than some of the questions I heard all night. All right, but, but uh, um, yeah, there's some crazy questions. So you must have a banger then. I have I have a two parter, a two parter, right, and uh, the first part is for Pierce. Um, Pierce, I am curious um, if we are ever gonna run it back due to the <laughs> fact that the last time we did it together, <laughs> you you left me mid map 
but to go Yo. to the other team. Facts. I need to know if that I was insane. About that, I right forgot back. about that. That was that. fucking insane. What a question. You're so Explain me. Explain I this. got a bad taste in my mouth, and I need. To, I, we got to solve that. You know what? You know what? I'm down to run it back one of these times because you're right. We didn't get a good enough shot. Kyler kind of did fuck us. It was unfortunate. Let's just not go into all that. Wow. I mean, Kyler went, <laughs> Kyler went, we could have been a good team. I'm not actually, like, even bullshitting. We could have been a good team. We could have actually made something that was really bad into something really good. But, wow, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I, don't know what the, I don't know what else to tell you about that. You switch teams, bro. Um, what? So, I didn't. I've never switched teams before ever. Like this is probably like the first time I've ever done it. And apparently, like when you switch teams, like you can't switch. Uh, like you can't choose the specialist right away. So like I thought someone kept taking my specialist, so I kept switching back and forth over and over again. But apparently, you can't choose your specialist for like up to like ten yeah, seconds. It's like locked, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like locked. And I I didn't know that. So I thought someone kept stealing my specialist. I was like, bro, who's stealing it? <laughs> Dude, he was, he was literally like arguing with, I think it was Justin, and we were, we were all just like, no, none of us have anything. Like, <laughs> the, best part, the best part was when like he he finally thought he got it figured out. Like it was after like two or three switches, I think. Like, so I was, spotted was, on I, the other I, team. Yeah, it was happening fast. And then like, I guess he thought he was right on our team and had his right specialist. I was so like, good shit, boys, we and, got and spawns. And he was like, he was like all, right, all right, I'm back. We got spawns. And we all collectively went. No! They got <laughs> and, he, and then he switched back. That's, That's fucking true. hilarious, dude. We were mind blown. I remember watching that. Wait, if you think live. about it, though, it's fucking hysterical right now. Like, to think about oh, it, but I like. Know. I watched the clip, like, a couple of like, no, ago. I'm not even lying when I say it. That was, like, quite literally probably the first time I've ever switched teams. Because, like, I was like. Because, like, I was. You know, like, when they get streaks, right? Like, you switch to. You switch to Flak Jacket. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like, to try to prevent that. And, like,. For some reason, it wasn't on my classes. It was on, like, change team and stuff like that. And I was, like, literally trying to switch as fast as possible to switch over. And literally just put me on the other team. And I was, like, bro, what's going on? I was, like, I literally didn't even know that glitch or not glitch. Like, that feature, like, where you can't choose, like, the specialist was a thing. Yeah. But, and then uh, dude named Finn in the chat said that was map one. Nah, that was map four. So that was the last, like, memory I have of teaming with Finn. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was for elimination map four on day, like, like, like you didn't even get a proper opportunity, bro. All right, Patty P, what's the second part of your question? <clears throat> nah, I'm going to hold it now. Ah, <laughs> uh, nah, it's got to be said. I mean. No, it wasn't, it's, not, it's not for you, Pierce. So I'm just going to. We'll just we'll just we'll just hold it for a rainy day. <laughs> okay, this guy's got it locked and loaded. <laughs> All right. Um, oh, we have clown of the week, weekly clown. All right. So this weekly clown is not really one person. Um, I know you guys were saying like nubs and stuff like that, but nah, he's not the weekly clown. I actually thought that shit talk was pretty funny. Wait, uh, hold on, but to interrupt you really quick, Ant. Could, mm. I don't, I don't want to like ahead, steal ahead, your ahead. thunder, but um, I saw somewhere on Reddit that said I don't know if this is true, but um, because you brought up Nubsy, that there was like a Reddit post that said um, Nubsy, other than the LAG series that they won like last tournament or whatever, or the yeah. last time they lost to LAG, the last tournament, um, that was his first win since like July twentieth, twenty nineteen or something. What? Wow. Wait. Wait, Wait, that because, makes sense though. Because Jinji double got eliminated at champs, right? And then yo, that's wild to think and about. And then Seattle had only won that match, or <laughs> that was the first time. Yeah. yeah. He's slowly, slowly becoming a meme, bro. He's got to get rid of this ASAP. And he says, "Yo, that's how small, bro. yo, we're noticing he's becoming a meme. He's got to get rid of it." But he's not clown. He's not the weekly clown this week. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Weekly clown is gonna be the Toronto Ultra. All right. And we'll go into it in a second, but we're going to bring our informant here. Uh, we'll give you his name. <laughs> hey, why am I getting that title? <laughs> our informant. <laughs> Nick, Nick Scott, thank you for the nine months. Our informant to talk to us a little bit more about the situation. Don't, don't appreciate the title. So, All right, my bad. Our informant, our confidant. Our confidant. So, uh, it was discussed on another podcast earlier today about the situation in Toronto and just to, to highlight basically the situation when Nick was, he was told if he goes home, 
he can't play and it's it's a tough situation for them because they were they were playing pretty well before that and it's mm-hmm. one of those things that in short term obviously has team issues but long term it's as you guys know you know players are pretty tight they talk to each other and you know you don't want to make the impression that you're not a player for historic yeah yeah so basically yeah and i've heard a few things about this i'm not affiliated with them whatsoever so i can talk about it i've heard a few things about them not letting players go home um, I don't know the exact reasoning behind it, but it doesn't really make a lot of sense to me when in, a t- in how hard times have been this year, like players might want to go home for a little bit to spend some time with their family. Um, and you definitely don't want to come across as the organization that is holding your players hostage, not letting them go home for a little bit to spend time with said family. So many people who are married, people who have family that they want to go be with or, you know, spend some time or a weekend away. Uh, their team was playing a lot better. And I at first thought that it was just classic taking a step down for family stuff, but I didn't know that they were refusing to let him go home, which is fucking mind blowing to me, to be honest. Um, so, with that being said, I have them as the clown of this week. Yeah, it's weird because I don't think they're letting they won't let him play from from New York, wherever he lives. And I'm like, I don't understand because as people are pointing out, you're in an online league. Um, and some, and some I people, believe that some Looney went home intentionally to to fix their spread for the league. Can Looney exactly. go home? Can Looney go home as no. well? Yeah, Looney no. can't even go home. He's he's on the bench. This guy has a house. I think and, and a I wife. Think, <laughs> like, I think from an thing. argument standpoint, Nick might be better off playing in like New York, where he's from, than yeah. in Toronto due to like internet. That yeah. that, only, that is ridiculous. Oh, we all understand that, and I, and that's just the weird part when we're looking I mean, at the the only thing going on over there with Toronto. Like the only thing that like is like you know like messed up about like. Or well, not messed up, but like understandable. But this thing is like if like they were doing content, you know, with Dan, like the whole time, you know, and like or with like all the Toronto. Uh, Ultra it's members. all from home though. Like put a yeah, backdrop. No, of the but, shit. Though, but, but no, I'm material. saying like since they're since they're there, since like I have like family in like Toronto that like I still talk to. Like I called up and they said that like the borders are just closed. Like they're not letting anybody in. And like if you go out, like let's say they're they're all American, right? Like all of them are American. They're not letting any Americans in. They don't want to let anybody in. If you're a Canadian, they'll let you in. But other than that, like they're okay. like so so I, so, I so let me let me respond to that. I, I I feel really strong about it and respond to that. Okay, then deal with that, my my guy. Then the organization deal with that, right? Like if they won't let anybody in, just deal with it. Make content from home. The player comes yeah. first. They're period. From home anyways, though, because they're not getting together. No, that that that's what I'm yeah. saying though. Like. Like, even if, if there's a risk of them not being able to get back in the country, like, deal with it. Because they the player needs the players need to be able to spend time with their family. It, oh, no, 100%. I was just saying, like, if they were making content, it would sort of understandable. But, like, even, like, them not making any content, like, with Dan being on the bench, it's just unexcusable. Like, it's completely, like, disrespectful. Like, the, like he should be able to go back. Like, he has literally just a fiancé that he literally just, what, just had to get up and leave? Like, come on. Yeah. Like, what the fuck is this? It's crazy. So- just uh, one thing to clarify about the border thing, because I've seen this been tossed around before and, and other things. So those players, I assume, see any reason why, probably have valid work visas in Canada. And so they're American citizens, so going back to the U.S., they have no issue. They have no issue going back to Canada either because they have the right to be in there and do their visa. So I don't okay. think that's the issue at play it's, here. Yeah, that with, sounds kind of absurd. Like, it's, it's, yeah, it's due, no, it's due yeah. to coronavirus, not not anything yeah. to do well, with... Well, uh, then hop in a car drive home like will they not let him do that like you still can't get through like i, uh, I, don't, I don't understand like uh no, they just they just don't like like they're like on full lockdown still so like you can't you know, take like, a flight from toronto to detroit right now uh, like if you're if you're canadian you can if okay. you're if if you're an american i wouldn't recommend it they don't like people right now coming into their country because like they're trying to kill off this like kind of virus and taking it super serious but they can leave though they can come back to u.s <laughs> like which is I don't know. I think they would just have to deal with it if the player couldn't get uh, back no, in. No, they would definitely just have to deal with it. They should be able yes. to deal with it. Like, what they're doing right now, like like I said, is just completely inexcusable. It's just like... All right. Well, it seems like oh. we're on unison here that that's the clown of the week. That's really oh, the oh, yeah, no. Um, <laughs> like, bro. People making... want us to talk about the next event. However, we've just hit the two-hour mark, so yeah. we're going to have to maybe talk about it on our own streams or come out with something else, you know, soon maybe tomorrow night to you know talk about what we think is gonna happen saturday and sunday but you just kind of went over a little bit guys so i appreciate all you guys uh tuning in much love to everybody who stopped by if you're on youtube make sure you leave a like if you're listening 
on Spotify or iTunes. Go check out the YouTube video and leave a like or leave a review. It goes a long way. Everybody here live every week, much love. Yo, Pierce, thank you, bro. I was living. No problem. Anytime. I hope thank uh, you all for tuning in as always. I hope your community continues to grow and I hope you have good fortune in your future, man. Thank you very thank much. Thank you. Likewise. All right, so we're about to actually go play some uh, Warzone. Pierce, John, you guys down? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm down, yeah, I think, yeah. All right, John, it, it, actually, or what? John, do you mind going live so I can host you from here? And I'm going to hop on. Sure. And I'll come play. Okay, so it, let me. Uh... Yo, guys, stick around. I'm going to host John. So you guys go check him out. And we're all going to play some Warzone. Um, and also, shout out to, to Ben J. Nissim. For being in here every single week helping As us usual, out, man. Yes. The fucking Always very man. Helpful. All right. Let me know when you go live, John. I'm gonna host you for like five, ten minutes. I'm gonna unhost and then get back on. So people